Hello everyone. Dantier here with my Guild Wars 1 stream. Uh, Twitch informs me that it is my two-year affiliate anniversary, so about two years ago. Actually, Facebook told me this too, because apparently I posted on Facebook and about uh, reading through all the legalese for becoming an affiliate. Facebook, Facebook was like, hey, here's a memory of where you're talking about going through all the legalese. Uh, but here we are. I, I became an affiliate about two years ago. Give or take 24 hours. And um, keep, keep hydrated, folks. And uh, here we are. Time for some Guild Wars 1. I'm going to be continuing the Skill Booster League on Imrahil Argentum. Uh, last time I did some book filling, if I remember, on him. As well as Shards of War. He has not done anything. In, oh, no. Wait. Wait. We've done Curse of the Norn Bear. So not nothing. Um, but there's a lot more to do on, uh, on him. So I will be... Working on that, I guess. This is the best way to summarize it. I think I might. Yeah, I like the idea of going through the uh, the Norn stuff first and getting the dwarves strung up. Um, let's do some random quests. This sounds loud to me. It's not any different than it normally is, though. I don't know. Um, which is one? I have both mano. Norno and okay we got a bunch of quests to do that that is the point here um this is not a good bar for doing a bunch of random quests on I probably want slash warrior that is not slash warrior um that's good I don't need those any of those uh I guess some leadership works. Well, let's do Mano and Norno first, in which case, like, I guess I don't need more than, like, four leadership. Command doesn't really do much for me either. Let's, um, where's my, I should have a Spear Mastery hat in here. There. Um, and let's grab Tactics. Yeah, that comes out nice and neat. Uh, I want Tactics because Healing Signet is just going to be a superior healing option. Shield Stance also not a bad idea um, in this particular situation. Uh, I could use Burning Shield as well, but it's going to be a little weak. Mm. Throw on Bonetti's too. Why not? I need more skills on this guy. How's my... <laughs> okay. Supply of skill points is a wee bit low. Um, let's grab Flurry and my Zealous Spear here. Flail would be the ideal... Uh, I don't have Flail. Also, I'm pretty sure Flail would be kind of weak. Um, let's grab Barb Spear here. Okay, let's go beat up some Norn, I guess. I've heard much of you. So the the big thing here is uh Yeah, I I I'm not really using anything from leadership. I don't have good good use of uh, leadership, so I don't know. I, I had something that I was going to say, but I kind of lost mental track. Where do I want this microphone? I have to kind of muck about with the arm over the course of the run just because I kind of, I need to adjust my position, so the microphone needs to kind of wander around a little bit too.
You know what I'm realizing is Bonetti's defense works really well when you have... Uh, We're both trying to heal the same thing. Um, but Bonetti's defense works really well when you have a... Uh, Spear of Fury to give you Mountains of Adrenaline. Oh, he went down as soon as his uh, bear form went off and he lost the bonus HP. This is not the best bar. I feel like maybe I would have been better served by switching to a tactic shield. Do I have a tactic shield? Really, I have a tactic shield. Uh, I have motivation. I should probably have a tactics shield. Yeah, I probably should have a tactics shield. Uh, we'll not worry about that right now. What's this? Undertaker's? Cool. I have an astral pillar. When I feel like using that. Um... Death Strike is like, so it's so weird because this is a ranged attack, so it works with literally any ranged weapon, bows, spears, wands, staves. Um, it does a set amount of damage rather than having an additive to it, but it is a quick attacking skill. But bleeding for cracked armor is just aggressively underwhelming. It does kind of work with uh, Signet of Infection, though. So that's a thing. Um, yeah, I don't need these skills here. I didn't have an elite there that I was using. I'm just realizing. Um, I don't need to watch yourselves. Something like charge or incoming would be useful in this next one, but it's not that important. That feels okay. But I th think I might do this. The main other thing that I could use, actually I could really use, do I, hmm, that, uh, hang on, I need to go grab. What I'm thinking here is, um, soldier speed would be useful. Yeah, that's 17 second duration. That is not where I'm going to see my gold supply. My gold supply is zilch at the moment. I can fix that. Let's just grab some. I'm afraid I'm busy. You're afraid you're about your business, eh? Yeah, there's soldier speed. I don't need most of these. I think I might grab grapple for potential amusement sake. This guy's not really going to do melee attacks. I have a different paragon on which I do melee attack stuff. Um, so most of these are not, uh, I can grab shield bash as well. That might be of use on occasion. Um, but most of these are not particularly useful. Um, you know what? Actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually pick up, uh, some of these because I do have the daggers on him if I want to I can use some of these skills with the daggers the uh, leadership daggers which seems potentially reasonable like I could absolutely see using thrill of victory with leadership daggers 
There we go. Some soldier speed there. That has permanent uptime as well, which is nice. Um, let's go. I probably don't need that one as much. Let's try this one for now. Anyway, I'm going to do this one. Is it worth it? Probably not quite. Well, come on. Become something I can be aggressive against. Okay, I do want to switch over to my zealous one. I'm finding myself with... bunch of stuff and poor energy gain from leadership. I am technically getting a little bit of energy back, I think, from To the Limit. Yeah, I get two energy back from that because it's affecting me and I count as in my own ally. So leadership does count me. The Spear of Lightning does pretty good damage. It's just the energy requirements on it are kind of high. Faster attack speed is pretty nice. I should really have soldiers, whatever, the block stance that increases attack speed to one of the effects of a shadow chant on this guy. But I do not. Did I? Yeah. I set these up even. To be fine. How can I help? Ooh, good old Ebon Vanguard assassin support. May the gods protect you. Oh yeah, the Modinir one. Ebon Escape is a really good skill. I should absolutely do this. Um, but I need some heroes, because I ain't going to do this alone. Um... Yeah, I remember I had some wonky stuff going on. How's Raza set up? How's Raza set up? Yeah, Raza is also set up as... Signal of Spirits. What's the difference? I think he's more resto. I'm gonna use Prius here. Um, who else do I want to bring? Is Gwen set up for anything? No, Gwen's not been anything at this point. Maybe I should. Um, I'm just going to check out what these mesmers have going on. I said I'm going to check out what these mesmers have going on. Okay, so he's got an, a major illusion. Yeah, for some reason he's got a major illusion, but he doesn't have, like, anything. Hang on. For some reason he doesn't have staff. You know, he's got a s domination scepter. Okay, he's major dom. Um, 
I don't know why he would be major illusion, but that's fine. And Gwen's not been kitted out at all either. Um. Let's go ahead and kick Gwen out then. She's using her inspiration stuff. I kind of would rather her have a staff as well. Yeah, let's actually grab Jora. I feel like using Jora. I don't know. I don't tend to use her often. Um, and give her a better shield. I'm okay with her using this long sword. Um, maybe I'll give her one for my bank because I've got a couple swords in my bank. Uh, but we'll see. Obviously, these two need to be kitted out. Um. I kind of feel like running Ogden. Ogden's been set up as for smiting, which is fine. He's just using his base staff, is that right? Yeah, that's not... I'm just... I'm going to swap that out. Oh, he's got some spicy here stuff here. Um Okay. Uh obviously I'm gonna need to spend a little bit of time kitting people out. We're gonna do that. But first I need to clear out my inventory of these bonus weapons. Again, forever. I wish that these showed up in a separate thing. Like a separate uh like unclaimed items window, but There's lots of things that I'd want to change in, in Guild Wars 1. Um, but, like, convenience factor, I would love to change that to show up more conveniently. I would love uh, to have a weapon mods trader. Um... I have a superior domination rune floating around in my bank. There it is. Oh, and I get to sell the base thing too. That's nice. Don't think I have anything else floating around here. In that regard, anyway. I do have this mall. A dubious FDS. Too many crafting materials. I was discovering the other day that the Singing Blade is a very different weapon than the uh, Golden Machete. This one's not bad, actually, just by itself, except for the part where it's 13. <laughs> Requirement 13 is a bit, a bit much, but... Um, this has mods I want on it. I have the power. It's not ideal for... for The gothic sword's kind of neat. I don't really want ebon, but... I also got this celestial blade, but again, I kind of... I've got a lot of, en like, almost okay enchanting mods floating around. Hmm. Oh, yeah. These Jotun pelts that I have stored up. I think Nick is collecting them soonish. Now? I'm. You know what? I'm going to take a quick peek at the wiki. It's not super relevant, but... Um, yeah, he's currently collecting leathery claws in the Ascalonian foothills. So I think it's n next week. Okay, I don't think I have any swords floating around that I actually want to give her. This one's not bad. 
Is this better than what she currently has? It is, actually. I mean, it needs to be customized, but... Yeah, let's grab this Igneous Blade. I'm going to give her this Igneous Blade. Because it is better. I could make it Furious. I have a bunch of Furious mods floating around. I don't mind making... Like, I don't have a whole lot of characters that need this sort of thing. I could take the Sundering off of this. Sundering is kind of an underwhelming mod, but... Um, I don't mind her having that. Where was it? It's like, do I care that much about any of these other mods, though? I don't know if I really care about any of the mods on this thing. I don't know why I'm holding on to this. I don't really need to have the power. I think I don't use it is the thing. I think I have another I have the power floating around somewhere. You know what? I'm just going to do this, and if I get to keep it, I get to keep it. I don't, and that's fine. And I'll just do this and give her this weapon. Um, okay, so here's another question. Will the weaponsmith here give me the time of day? I don't think I need 10 plat, but I'm just grabbing it. I'm afraid I'm busy. Okay, he won't even give me the time of day, which is fine. Um, I'll just go to my guild hall. There's stuff there that I can work with. It's one of those things where, like, part of me is like, oh, but I need to be using this. And then part of me is like, you know. You know what you could do. Okay, let's delete her garbage longsword. Um, there, customize this, this bad boy. And now she has a sweet sword. Which I mean, one with better mods in it. Um, okay, so he's ruined up. Gwen needs runes. Rune trader. Minor fast casting, please. It just ran out of stock on minor fast casting. Okay, uh, minor illusion. Okay, minor inspiration is actually at a reasonable price. Prodigies are coming down fast, I'm noticing. Um, I guess I'll just get her a major fast casting and she'll just have low health. Sure, that'll work. Um, actually, let's get her some survivors to help offset that some. Let's see. Four, five, minor vigor. I want two minor vigors. Actually, I want one for Jora as well. Um, superior domination. Illusion. Fast casting, inspiration, and some vigor here. I tend to like to put vigor in the chest piece. It's just an old habit. Okay, Jora, I'm going to give you minor vigor here. Superior Absorption, Superior Swordsmanship. And then Minor Tactics, Minor Strength. Uh, I need some Stone Fist. I personally favor knights. Um, but I think I might get her dreadnoughts, because why not? I 
Everybody knows Stone Fist goes in the fists. My little joke. Yeah, he's all survivored up. Okay, um, that seems good. Let's leave the guild hall. I know a lot of people don't like m melee heroes for good reason. Melee heroes do have some problems. Um, chief among them being that they need to get up and the enemy's girl to be able to do anything, which obviously uh, has problems. Okay, um, let's look at what skills I have available to me in my skill booster league, because that is what I am doing. Um, Jora, this is an interesting question. Mm, I do have... So, sword is awkward in that it kind of wants bleeding. Uh, it, it's quite fond of bleeding. Like, as a condition. Um... Skullcrack is really nice on assassins. I'm trying to decide what I want to do for her for elites. Obviously, the dragon slash combo is pretty sweet. I can go kind of heavy in tactics, though. Um, I have a copy of Charge. Yeah, let's clear some of this out. I'm kind of inclined towards, like... Charge. Um, to the limit. Hear me, do I have repost? Yeah, I think I might give her a copy of repost as well. Um, and then let's go with like Galarath, Savage. It's just, you know, casual 43 extra damage on that. Um, standing slash is not actually great here under what she's currently got going. Um, there's a lot of options. Huh, I could instead of charge, or charge is nice because it speeds everybody up. Um, which is quite nice. It also removes crippled, uh, which I think they did to make it compete with incoming, which they nerfed because it was bonkers. I could also drop her strength down to four and put soldier stance on there. Um, I'm not sure how intelligently the AI uses it though, and I don't think she really needs that. So. It would work well with Standing Slash, however. I think I might just go Sun and Moon. I do want a Resurrection skill of some kind. I what Monk's ones do I have available? I have another copy of Restore Life I can use. I think I'm inclined towards that. some restore life action going there. Um, Gwen. I'm going to need to pay attention to what I have going on in Mirian, because Mirian obviously has a bunch of Mesmer stuff as well. This is not the way to find Mesmer stuff. Uh, although I will take a quick peek. I think... Yeah, okay. I've got some Death Pack Sickness. I don't really have any copies of Flesh in my Flesh, it looks like. But I do have the ever dubious lively was Naomi and uh, Death Pack. So I think I'll probably 
giving her death pact here. Duelist. I'm currently not using any. I have an unyielding aura monk. So that's something as well. Okay, let's go look at Mesmer things. We're not getting too far off meta with some of this stuff. Uh, yep, we've got several copies of Empathy, so I'm going to easily drop one on her. And Cry of Frustration. Um, I can E-Surge with her. Yeah, it's this one. Uh, I was looking at this one because I was getting hit with a skill and something I was doing. The other, oh, Winds of Change. I was getting hit with a skill. I, was, I have a play group on Sundays that I play with, and yeah, we're getting getting hammered with that one. Um, let's see. I can grab Shatter. I don't need that much inspiration. Those last two points can go in restoration. Um, I might want some inspiration, maybe, depending upon what she's got. Mantra Frost doesn't feel bad to me. I'm going to grab Mantra Frost here. Um, and I think a Drain Enchantment. I'm probably going to run E-Search as her elite, and I'm probably going to then stick on Unnatural Signet. And run something like this. There's going to be a lot of ice damage out in this area, so I don't mind giving her a little bit of additional oomph against that. Okay, so Ogden is principally smiting. Um, do I have, this is a good question. What, what skills do I even have? So I, partly I would be inclined towards including, um, like gift of health as an option on him, but it's quite clear to me that I don't have gift of health, uh, because I'm not seeing it. be like in here uh, so that's not a thing that's going to be happening I think he's probably going to be mostly smiting prayers I like the idea of running some protection prayers I don't have a soul twist in this party so having some protection actually is a very good idea uh, I don't think I'm going to bring Signet of Devotion I want Smite Condition, Smite Hex, uh, and Reversal of Damage. If I have all of those, hang on, I should actually be playing this game properly. Uh, I do want a copy of Prot Spirit. Do I have... Okay, there's Reversal of Damage. I might not have Smite Condition. I would be shocked if I didn't have a bajillion copies of Smite Hex, because I always seem to. Um... There's Smite Hex. Okay, but I don't actually have access to Smite Condition, it looks like. Which is unfortunate, but also how it goes. Okay. Um, in that case, let's drop on Zealot's Fire. Um, and Mend Condition on him. Mend condition. There it is. Found it. Um, I have a shield of absorption. So let's throw on shield of absorption. That one's good. I don't know what elite I want just yet. 
it will probably be a smiting prayers elite as much as I love some of these prop prayers. Um, do I have guardian? Yes. Okay. I do want a copy of guardian. Okay. Now I need to figure out what elite I want. Um, okay. It's not going to be Balthazar's pendulum. My elite options are a lot thinner than I would have thought. I do have Peace and Harmony, which I don't... Which is not a good idea here, because it disables your Smiting Prayers for 20 seconds. Um, Signet of Removals. Signet of Removal is a skill that I like in very specific contexts. I think it works well on an Orders... Like a team that's running like Orders or Aegis Chains or things like that. But when I am not doing things that are just going to be putting enchantments on all of my allies, it seems a lot less good. Uh, I'm probably just going to run Signet of Judgment, because that's what I got here. Uh, it's all right. It's not amazing. I don't really want Balthazar's Pendulum. Hey, thank you, Loopy. I appreciate that, and welcome. Hopefully I pronounced your name okay. It's not an I. I's and L's can look so much alike. Um. Yeah, I think I'll probably just... It's a very weird bar. I think I'm just going to roll with this. This trigger... I never use a skill that targets an ally. This would be a situation where... Um, like, it would synergize well with Glimmer. Of course, I'm going slash prot. It would synergize with, like, if I had Life Sheath, that might not be bad to run in that spot. Signet of Removal almost feels like it could be almost kind of almost working with, like, Zealot's Fire. But obviously, I don't think it quite does. But it is interesting to think about, like, Zealot's Fire triggering off of stuff. Hmm. I wonder if there's a no attribute skill in a different profession that would be worth running. Probably not. I'm going to go with probably not. But I'm going to quickly glance through... Yeah, because, like, I don't think I'd run Blessed Light on this bar, but I could absolutely see running, like, empath Empathic Removal. Again, it's just, like, what do I have access to in my randomized list of skills? And the answer is not much, as it turns out. I don't think... Let's see. Yeah, okay, he's not running any conflicts with Takora, so at least that. Uh, I think that's all the prep I need to do on that end. I probably don't want this bar on myself, but I'll do deal with that now. Um, I don't mind being a little bit more offensively oriented, but I think... I might actually run Empathic Removal on myself if I have it. Do I have it? Yes. I'm going to run it. Because you know what? I like Empathic Removal, and why not? Um... Sucker is one of those spells that I feel like it seems like it could work really well on, like, um, a warrior to use on monks and stuff. I just wish the AI was a little bit smarter. I I wish... I would like a game that's Guild Wars 1, but an offline game that has, like, better AI and, like, Final Fantasy 12-style gambits for programming skill use, because that seems like it would be really nice. Okay, so the real question is, do I want commander motivation here? I feel like I want motivation. I 
And the reason why I say that is because... Um, I feel like I want the additional healing power that comes with motivation. I'm also going to bring Lyric of Zeal. Lyric of Zeal... Um, I mean, I have a BIP, so I probably don't need it for energy management, strictly speaking, but I have a decent number of Signets kind of floating around this party, so it gives additional energy management support to my team, which seems good. I do feel like my healing's a little bit weak, so that's also part of why I want to go over here. Um, Energizing Chorus is, like, nice for me. I guess it has good synergy with There's Nothing to Fear, but I tend to want to use that at the start of battle. It works really well with Anthem of Flame, but... Um, it's one of those things where this would work better in uh, command, just because the anthems there that you'd have to work with are a little bit, a little bit nicer. I could go alternatively course of restoration, but I don't really have shouts and chants across my team. I guess it works with Dora. Maybe I want to just act like Jin to have a shout or chant. That doesn't seem wrong. I guess Energizing Chorus does help her charges into the limits to be cheaper. I should consider that. Yeah, I'll stick with it. At some point, I feel like I want to make a team that's a little bit more... Uh, heavily set up towards some of those things. Okay, let's um, do some defending here. This one's pretty nice to have minions for. I do like to step back just because of the snowballs that'll be coming along. Gunner Pound Fist can change her armor. Why would her page not have hero armor? Okay, um... Okay, Gunner Pound Fist. Okay, I'm gonna have to look at that later. We're in the middle of combat now. A lot of these are going to be like level 8s, so they're actually not as dangerous as they look. I'm not quite sure when these snowballs are going to show up. Okay, Jorah's uh, Deldrum armor is pretty intense. What about... Kind of like Gwen's, though. Um... Feeling a little off, because I haven't played this game in a week. Okay, like, if I'm going to be doing healing stuff, I want this over here where I can see it. Like, when it's over here, it's just out of sight of my line of sight. So, like, when I'm doing healing, that's where I want it. much more visible to me. I think that's the main snowballs we're going to have to worry about. There's a lot of spirits around here. And suddenly got terrible. Uh... 
Slow ground is slow. I'm going to get knocked down. It's hard to avoid. I'm enchanted, so... No healing for me. That is a huge bundle of enemies. I need to like balance time that I take out to do healing actions with the need for me to, oh, map piece, that's nice. Uh, do defense. Or with, with the fact that I need to do offense. Hey, Dune fan. Good to see you. Welcome. Hope you're doing well. Experiencing lag. Mm. Okay, team was victorious, so that's good. Okay, so Jorah's other armor. Because the Deldrimmer one is frankly a bit extra on her. If you ask me. I like Zandra's. I like Gwen's. But a lot of them are somewhat much. Let's see. Um, other one is Brotherhood, I think. Yeah, I like her Brotherhood armor better. It is less over the top. But if I have some of the stuff for Gwen, I might do it. This party definitely needs a bit more healing, it feels. Um, but I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. Do I have... Oh, uh, you know what? I do have Power Stones of Courage on another character. But not the top left. No, it had to be the one I had the most copies of. Shocking. Uh, I will take you up on that highly salvageable offer. I disagree with... Well, 12 iron ingots isn't bad. Hmm. So is modern armor likely to be leather... No, oh, those iron ingots. Pleasant surprise. Okay, um, let's merchant the rest of this stuff. Because I don't need it. Here's Jonathan Blunt. Worried for a second that we'd lost somebody somehow. But we did not, in fact, have that happen. Are you still here? What is Mirian using anyway? He does have Undertakers on. Hmm. I figured as much, but. I don't want to just stuff this in my bank. But let's do that. Um. Okay. I liked... Now, do I have Cloths of the Brotherhood? I think I do. That's Deldrum or Armor Remnants. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, these. Give me one. That way I can change Gwen's armor. Let's go talk to Gunner Poundfist about some armor. Huh. Dropped a few frames in there. Not a lot, just like 20, but... Yeah, 
Yeah, I'll probably want to get Jorah that, but I, I can't do that until I get to Central Transfer Chamber, so it's going to be a little bit... Never. Uh, yes. Who goes there? Also, could you make when this? Yes, thank you. Never anger uh, goodbye. I'm surprised he gives me Hogney's quest already. I forget that he gives it, quite frankly. Um... For those who don't know, this is Gwen's armor here. So. This looks like the rogue armor. Mesmer rogue armor. Most of these are... Eh, a couple of these are mercenary heroes, so... Um... Wait, did I have... You ever have one of those moments where you're like, wait, I think I had a thing. I do think I need to be doing at some point... The... Magni the Bison thing as well. I was just talking about how I felt like this guy needed a tactic shield, and I was thinking... That's motivation. That's not a bad motivation shield, though. I may try to upgrade him to that at some point if I can get a mod that I want. Yeah, everybody's going to have their own personal preferences of what they like best, but I definitely think I like that dress best for her. Um... What is this? 13 strength. I'm just checking to see if I have a tactic shield lying around. It's Master of My Domain Inscription. Hey, Dawnbreaker. Good to see ya. Hi, Slightly Sprightly. Uh, I've been enjoying it for this little bit, but I need to kind of change up what I'm doing some, I think. Okay, hang on. Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because I might do Master of My Domain Motivation Shield. Because some stuff is a bit weird. Yeah, it's probably bronze, isn't it? A bunch of the ones that are... Focus item only are weird armor ones. Like armor plus 5 while health is above 50% and stuff like that. Um, yeah, otherwise it, they go on everything. You, li you like Spear Mastery, but it leaves something desired because Stunning Strike is incredibly expensive to use and Cruel Spear is conditional. Yeah, in terms of like elites, I can, I can agree with you. I will say that, um, Spear of Fury is an absolutely absurd attack and does a lot to make Stunning Strike way more playable. So I think Stunning Strike is actually a pretty viable skill on Spear Mastery players, just because Spear of Fury, like, the six strikes of adrenaline you get from this is absolutely bonkers and can really help you keep permadays on a, an enemy. Um, but yeah, otherwise, it is it is very expensive. And it helps you build up to it and stuff. It Like, this is one of the most bonkers adrenaline gaining skills. Yeah. Uh, Paragon is weird in that it simultaneously has some of the more broken skills in the game, but also, like, some of the more underwhelming ones. Okay, I'm going to pull this out, and I'm going to go find that diamond Aegis, because I don't care about this Riders in the Storm um, mod at all.
But this is probably a bit better than the... I should absolutely be running my motivation shield anyway. Um, it was probably a bit better than this Daedal shield. And if nothing else, it is way nicer looking. Do I want to diet anything? That kind of fits in with this color aesthetic a little bit better. I don't know. I think I'm just going to leave it as is for now. Yeah. It's like Ritualist also suffers some from this problem of having some incredibly powerful stuff, but like it works out to like two builds. For some reason, I thought I had more tactics something floating around in my bank. I don't know why. Probably just kept seeing that one motivation shield and being like, ah, that's not quite what I'm looking for. Yeah, I think that must be it. I have this one as well, but this is also not quite what I'm looking for. Hmm, that is amusing. Yeah, like... Part of the problem, too, that uh, I'm not going to do Magni's tournament right now, but I do need to do it at some point. I have enough Ritualists at the moment, but yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's the thing, though. Like, R Ritualist was kind of made to be a um, Jack of All Trades Master of None, and it also has too many too many mechanics um so when what i mean by this is like it has item spells get out of here divine symbol i don't need uh it has item spells it has um spirits like binding ritual stuff and then it has weapon spells that's three different like things and not i don't feel like any of them are super well developed the um I don't need this in there. The most developed is Binding Ritual stuff, but even that ends up being a little bit shallow. Um, and so it's just like, what exactly are you trying to do with with this character sort of thing, or this profession? Um, and it's kind of unfortunate because you kind of end up in this awkward, wonky state where... Um, hang on, I'm going to move these over to here. We kind of end up in this wonky, like, in-between area. Yeah. Like, th and that's the thing. It's like, like, Rituals has the most, like, fluctuation in terms of raw power. Clamor Souls is AoE. Uh, target foe and all nearby foes take pitiful lightning damage. Uh, if you're within your shot of a spirit or holding a bundle item, you gain 10 energy. It is AoE. It's got a really big AoE. Its damage is just, like, so terrible. And its um, recharge at 8 seconds is kind of long. Yeah, like, Clamor needs to be a lot more impressive. But the thing is, they didn't want Channeling Magic to just be... Um... They didn't want Ritualist to just, like, be, um, the, like, an el another Elementalist or something, or another Monk, and they tried to position a spot in between, and I think they kind of, like, skewed things. Part of the problem that you have is Restoration Magic is balanced around not having Divine Favor, so it's just, and really, it's Men, Body, Soul, uh, to an extent, Protective was Kalai, which I don't think is, like, overrated, but it's a little overrated. Weird... Uh, but Spirit Light and Men, Body, and Soul are, like, hands down the reason why Restoration Magic is as powerful as it is. Uh, and, like, it's just better to be Secondary Ritualist if you're going to be healing. Because you they're tuned to not need the Divine Favor. So, 
But like part of it too is like spirits are just really, really good. Um Vengeful was Kanai, I'm assuming. Like that's a specific thing used for some farming stuff. As I understand it. Um, okay. So I felt like we were maybe a bit light on healing. But maybe things will be a little bit better when we're not doing that. Okay, where am I going? I need... Okay, I want to go do those two things. What I want to do... It doesn't really matter. Let's do... Um... Okay, let's go visit Olaf and Olaf said because apparently this guy's been literally ne nowhere. Part of the problem too is the AI can sometimes be dumb about how they're using skills, but I'm gonna need this back over here if I'm gonna keep using this bar. Kinda don't want to. I really wish there was like a a four adrenaline shout that was just like allies and earshot are healed for like 30 HP or something like that. 20, 20, 30, something kind of weak, but that you could kind of just keep using regularly. Um, or like a shout that gave like allies and earshot health regen, like three health regen or something for a little bit. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, the game is great for, for doing that, so. Hmm, maybe I'm just going to drop these single target things. And bring Song of Restoration and Ballad of Restoration. Part of the problem that you had happen is motivation got curb stomped because it was too powerful, I guess. Is the idea. Of course, a restoration is pretty sweet, but I would need to work more shouts into my party to make that work. I think I actually have room for one more PvE only skill, so. Maybe I should just go slash warrior and bring. Um, armor. Save yourselves. Yeah, let's do that. Do I have, actually, before I go, actually, other other question. Yeah, okay. Do I have Onslaught? Because if I don't have Onslaught, I, I do not have Onslaught. Okay, never mind. I'm going to bring a Signet of Capture because I need to go kill, kill Mish, Lady of the Lake in the middle anyway, I might as well capture long, or capture, capture, capture um, Onslaught at that time. Now this is where I'm going to get all sorts of confused about which elite skill I get to keep. I think it's the left one. I don't know. At some point, I've complained about this numerous times. Like, low-hanging fruit, give me a checkbox for if I keep my rightmost elite or my leftmost elite. Give me that friggin' checkbox on zone. Um, I want that. Uh, I also want... Um, I want a weapon mods trader. Uh, Are you hunting something? I want... There's something else I was thinking that would be really nice, but I can't remember what it was offhand now. I should not be keeping that Draconic Spear out. Weapon Mods Trader is, like, really high on my list of things that I really want. Yeah, like, I think that they could also just make a Weapon Mods Merchant that, like, sells them for, like, copper Zyshin coins. Copper Zyshin coins, to be clear. Not their friggin' obsession with making things way too expensive. Um, 
Because if I could friggin' buy weapon mods and stuff, the the loot in this game would be so much more exciting in terms of like skins and stuff. Like like things like the the Balthazar's tokens or whatever. If I could just friggin' buy the weapon mods I want, and then it'd also free up my inventory from feeling like I have to hoard them. Never. I don't care if it's with a trader or if it's with um, some other like purchasing mechanism. I just want to be able to acquire them. There's some other like more minor thing that I was thinking of earlier that I'm like, I wish this was different. Um, let's see. I do want to do this other quest that requires me to kill enemies in here. So I need to keep an eye out for Corin, who patrols this lake, so it's a little bit harder to keep an eye out for. I'm not thrilled about going to this middle area. I'm trying to keep an eye out for Corrin. Oh. He's he's out there somewhere and I just don't know where. Yeah, I think I'm okay with Jorah being on aggressive for now. He's not doing a very good job of it. Mish, yeah, there's Mish Lady of the Lake. She shows up in the middle. I do need to survive Rabbit. Eh, I don't need to survive Rabbit, but I do need to go to Rabbit Hole. Which is... Potentially very painful. Wait, that's just some regular mod here. I thought I saw Corn for a second. Oh, there's Corn Wild Runner. Okay. I'm going to need to stand here and fight Chilling Wisps for a little bit. Um, I wish Sword was better. I feel like Sword is a bit underwhelming as a weapon. In part, it, like, I don't know why there's not just, like, a strength skill. Like, instead of having Cyclone Axe and Crude Swing, just give me a strength skill that's your just your generic... AOE on a four second recharge for like plus a little bit of damage. Hey, Fear. Good to see ya. The bottom of the frozen lake. Yeah, there's some trees down there for some reason. Not sure why. Okay, I saw Corrin heading around. Let's just take out Miish for now. Yeah, that's the Drakkar that people are always, or have been kind of excited about. Give me this. There. It's not very good, because I don't have anything invested in the Wind Prayers. I guess I can put a few points in the Wind Prayers. Still won't be very good, but... Five second duration. Yeah. Okay, I saw Corin. Over there somewhere. Where is he at this point? Uh, the one I'm wearing right now is an outfit. Yeah, it's the um, Melandrews stuff.
Yeah. Hi, yes. My party is getting wiped by Modernier. Why, thank you. Thank you for asking. Well, actually, we're getting wiped by Chilling Wisps, apparently. Alright, well, that's fine. Um, Wiglaf. Who goes there? Yeah, I'm going to agree with you on like a fundamental level. I think, I think I like the hat. I, I let me rephrase this. I know I like the hat slot. Um, but yeah, um, because like his standard armor is just this whatever this set is. Um. Just regular, like, Sun Spear stuff. But it... One of the things that was really cool about Guild Wars 1 was all of the professions having their own unique look, and the costumes completely erased that. So I, I'll agree with you that, like, at kind of a core level, I don't think they're great for the game either. Now, where the heck did Corrin end up? Well, I saw him patrolling this direction, so I'm just going to circle the lake. The heck happened to... Oh. Uh, there's a frost worm behind me. All right, then. I'm like, why did everybody take damage and get knocked down? Turns out uh, there was a worm. Have ourselves an avalanche here. Yeah, it also does a mess with that as well. Yeah, it overall doesn't make a whole lot of sense for how it works. I mean, in that regard, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for Guild Wars 2 either. Yeah, I'll agree with that. I, Some of them... Like, it's the sort of thing where I would... I would prefer them to add new armor sets that you can craft to the game. Like, it would have been cool if we could have crafted Shining Blade armor that was unique to each profession. That sort of thing would have been much cooler. Again, I do like the slot for the hat because we got a lot of holiday hats and stuff like that. And being able to wear those with actual armor and and not have to worry about any of that sort of malarkey was really is really nice, and I really appreciate that. But in terms of the um, costumes as a whole, I think it was not didn't make a whole lot of sense for the sort of game that this game is. I and I agree with you on that front. Okay, gotta take down them spirits of symbiosis. Them dastardly, dastardly spirits of symbiosis. Maybe I should tweak this guy to be an onslaught build. Yep, that that looks uh, looks real nice there. I really wish that they had a good fix for this. But unfortunately they do not. That's my... No, it's of defense. Of course it is. I would prefer to have an enchanting mod there, but... Spear enchanting mods are not, like, a thing I have in high supply. That implies I have them in any sort of supply. I 
I thought I had that closed. One second. Let me do that. I should have done that to begin with. Uh, setting it up to be um, priority only uh, for notifications. Oh, good. Hunt rank up. Hey, Clean Star. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. I myself probably overtaxed my brain during the uh, week, so I am hopefully taking things more chill for my brain today. We'll see. I'm just looking for Corrin at the moment. I saw him, but he kind of got away from me. So now I'm trying to figure out where he got away from me too. Yeah, unfortunately he was like past several enemies that I would have gotten stuck on, so I didn't want to try to like chase him down. Well, that means that means that I kind of lost tr track of him. So now I'm just kind of circling this lake, uh, killing anything in the way. Thank you. I think we can do some sort of party hat emote or something like party hat. I think. Yeah. It's just party hat. All one word. Capital P, capital H. Corin, there he is. It's a whole thing that Twitch is trying. So your specific experience of what it looks like might vary. I don't know. I don't know where their experiment's going to go. but Do a lockpick. I will take that. It's really amusing to me that those enemies can't... We can't cause bleeding... Where did... There he is. We can't cause bleeding on those enemies, but they can cause bleeding on themselves with... Uh, their, uh, their skill. Cultist Fervor. going to be good for my Norn rep reputation points, that's for sure. Okay, now all I have to do is go over here, probably die in that hole. I know that hole. Ugh. And then make my way to uh, pull off. Why do all of my... Why do some of my heroes have 1% DP? While others of us have 2%. That's very interesting. Not quite sure why that happened. I'm Gwen managed to not die in there. Oh, you know what? I bet she died to Death Pack Signet. That would make sense. Death Pack Signet is a good way to avoid death penalty. Let me amend that. It is a way to avoid death penalty. Whether or not it's a good way, I leave to other people to figure out. Okay, you know what? If they don't want to fight us, we can leave them be. I'm fine with this. Okay, I do need to use this res shrine 
I might as well go over here and grab it. It's not quite where I'm heading at the moment. Yeah, I've been really tired lately. I have a new mattress that's supposed to arrive sometime this coming week. It's predicted for Wednesday, but it may not be exactly then, uh, was the impression that I got. Uh, and I am really looking forward to it. I think my current mattress that I have been using for quite a few years now is actually just kind of terrible for me. Um, and especially after spending some time at the mattress store, trying out different mattresses, I'm like, and like training myself in that process to try to differentiate, like, how does this mattress feel? I'm really noticing just how uncomfortable my current mattress is. So I'm really, really excited about a new mattress. Uh, but it's going to be a few more days yet. And I am hoping that I sleep a lot better on the um, the one that's been ordered ordered a purple mattress for those curious I've long been interested in them uh, and got to try one out at the store and personally I liked it so I do not need that up right now close the mini map Okay, where's the fossil earthbound? We'll see how many enemies we can get in here. We got the important one, which is Nolfastu. The other ones that we kill would actually be like beneficial just because it gets um, more Norn reputation points. Well, I was trying to get Acolyte Jin to get herself some energy, but that didn't work. We're actually doing a shockingly good job of surviving, and I'm not quite sure how. Uh, how many copies of Unnatural Signet do I have? I might be running too many. Didn't think about that for some reason. Yeah, I shouldn't be running to a natural sickness in my party. Oh well. I'll need to change that when I get to Olafstead. I'll drop it off of her. It was even something I was thinking about needing to pay attention to, but for some reason I just didn't. I looked at like cry, frustration, empathy, and I just forgot when we got to that one. You know what? I will take friggin' surviving that, because that fight... This is a really pretty area. I don't tend to look at that often. Um, that this this area can be extremely deadly, so actually surviving it feels pretty good. Did I? Okay, probably. I successfully retained my lockpick. That's nice. I like it when I retain my lockpick. I really like the idea of the role Paragon is supposed to fill, but I feel like the design could have been a bit better for doing that.
so many of my tears in this hole. Uh, I think got close to me and I lost all my adrenaline. Okay, I think I need to do that swap. I think. I might want to change up what she's doing entirely anyway to move away from Mesmer to something else. I might make her smiting, actually. Why are you here? Whenever I see Terrifying Hero, I keep thinking it's one of the reputation things, but it's not. I am thoroughly a slayer of imps, though, at this point. Oh, I didn't know this guy had Survivor 1. That's neat. Don't know when he got it. I doubt it's recent. I could check. Yeah, I've only gained a 1,000 experience since I last died on this character, so I don't know when he got it, but... Okay, yeah, I kept the skill I wanted to keep Never good. Bang. Um, what? Oh, yeah, no. I'm not going to go see Seth Shadowhunter for my reward, thanks. I'd really like Breath of the Great Dwarf. That would be an extremely useful utility skill to have, but need to build up to uh, being able to do that, narratively speaking, so we'll get there. It's just really nice utility because uh, it's a party heal that you can always have access to regardless of your profession combo. Okay, that's enough of aggressive mode for Jora. I want her to maybe not run after enemies all the time. I kind of wish this was non-fleshy creatures in general, but... A lot of Modnir up here. Are you hunting something? Who's 
Hmm, just a little shy of getting the first level reward. That's fine. Well, it turns out Maelstrom doesn't do anything about my shouts and chants, so... I mean, I'm right next to her. I have to go back and talk to her. I can't help myself. Why are you here? Thank you for the 20 Norn reputation points. I appreciate it. I'm keeping an eye on my team, and our HP is doing fine, so I don't know. There's a lot of Vytir in the shadows around here. Okay, I probably didn't need to use that, but I did. Ooh, another locked chest. Yeah, see, there's more Vytir popping up. How am I being obstructed? On what am I being obstructed? Okay, I accept there's some trees that I'm being obstructed by here, but... Ranged weapons in this game would be a lot better if the world, like, geometry, geography... I don't know. Had better hitboxes. Yeah, I kind of want to make Mirian, like, more Ely or Crotty or something. See, I currently have two lockpicks. I still have two lockpicks, so I retained. Got junk, but, you know, it's kind of what you expect. What is this, anyway? 13 command shields. I think the body, of course, is a max mod because it has only one choice, and that's being a max mod. Otherwise, this is deeply mediocre. Yeah. Bring it. Are you hunting something? Okay, I need to change Mirian's bar though. She shouldn't have this unnatural signet. I need to fix that. Um, okay, what things do I have access to that I might want to use? Because, yeah, you can see I have this one unnatural signet, so I should only be running one across the team, and instead I'm running two, and so that's improper. Obviously, I'm playing a little... It's not, like, a hard set rule. Um...
I kind of like the idea of running... Motivation, what would that look like? So I'd have access to Signet of Synergy. I kind of like Mending Refrain. Um... Ballad of Restoration, Area of Restoration. I think I saw both of those in here, right? There's Area of Restoration and there's Ballad of Restoration. I don't know what would what have been some other interesting ballads for them to make. Ballads trigger when a party member takes damage. Um or triggers off of taking damage, more more generally speaking. Area's a uh, trigger off of spells. Um courses off of using shouts slash chance. Lyric of Purification is kind of garbage. I don't know why this one has a 20 second recharge. It feels like they just went through motivation and said, if it costs energy, it's got to have a long recharge. And it just feels like a universal thing that it did. And I'm not quite sure why. Anthem trigger off of weapon skills, of course. Um, Yeah, I could do that and then give her a second of return. That seems reasonable. I don't mind this. This seems like it might kind of contribute towards the direction that I want. And it makes my bar a little bit better. Because the energizing course helps her as well. Um, and energizing... Yeah, energizing course helps her. <laughs> that, that, that was the, the thought. End of thought. Um... I don't think there's anything that I want to capture in the area where we're headed. Eternal Aura is an interesting skill that I could bring, but I'm not going to. Um, right. I'm probably just going to bring... Um, Song of Restoration is, like, okay. Slot on Save Yourselves. I think this overall is fine. Um. Okay, if we're doing this, I should actually change out Blazing Spear. Blazing Spear is just going to be bad here. What conditions is my party inflicting? You know, I kind of want to change something on Acolyte Gen to get a condition on her. Hang on. What do I have, though? I want her to do barrage. Okay, I can pin down. Um... Probably instead of disrupting shot. Pin down's kind of expensive, but that seems fine. Um, how much do I need to remove hex on her? I have a shatter hex there. I have a remove hex there. And I have a smite hex. I don't think I need this remove hex. I'd rather not have the energy burden. I kind of like the idea of going slash paragon on her as well. I had multiple. Um. Yeah, because I could put Chorus of Restoration on her. What would I want to take down? I feel like I'd want to take down a little bit. A pin down is really expensive. The thing is, burning is is really really bad if you're going to be fighting destroyers. Um, I'll probably. Like, how does a six course of restoration look? That's not bad. That's 54 health. 54 health is not bad at all. Yeah, okay. So I have two signals of return for my heroes to use. So I'll stick one on her as well. Um, there. And just having an additional skill there is kind of nice. There's an argument for wanting to go into command for... um. Anthem of Weariness, but I don't have that for my hero, so that's something that I would have to do if I did that. 
Hmm. Hmm. I'm just looking at Gwen. Uh, she doesn't. Mantra Frost is going to lose a lot of excitement when we fight destroyers. So. Is there another inspiration spell that I'd want that to be? I think she had minor inspiration anyway. I might just drop the inspiration magic from her. I want I want more conditions, so I could Yeah, I think I might go curses. Maybe. Or I could go... I have a copy of Gaze from Beyond. It's probably somewhat unexciting. At eight. But let's see. That's a four second blind on a ten second recharge. That seems kind of underwhelming. Um... Let's see. I'm just checking. I, I want to avoid doing accidental improper things again. But, like, it's also not terrible. Curses feels like it would be a bit better. I would lose the res on her, but I have, I have enough reses in the party. I don't need her to be doing one. Because I want... Preferably both Enfeebling Armor. Okay, I have Weakened Armor, and I don't have anyone else running that right now. Okay. Enfeebling Blood. Um, I also would like some enchantment removal on her. Preferably Mesmer, because... Okay, so I do have a copy of Mirror of Disenchantment. Nobody else is running that, so I think I'll run... Mirror of Disenchantment on her. Uh, which is going to be at the bottom. There. Now, we do have a decent number of physical attackers. So I should probably try to change Dora to be able to deal with that some. Um... Yeah, charge is really nice for a lot of reasons. Fear me is maybe less important. Okay, let's... Okay, I do have Wild Blow. I want a copy of Wild Blow. Let's, let's leave To the Limit, because To the Limit's really useful. Do I, I don't actually need to watch yourself if I'm going to be bringing... Um, save yourselves because that becomes redundant. The plus armor cap is quickly, quickly hit in that case. Um, where's Wild Blow? It's no attribute. I don't know why I'm having a hard time finding it. Here it is. Um, I kind of want another adrenaline attack. Do I stick with? Um, I guess Sun and Moon Slash is fine. I could use Barbarous Slice. I think I might put Barbarous Slice on her. It does decent plus damage at decent costs. And the bleeding is a nice additional condition to have around to help fuel Spear of Fury. Part of what I'm looking at is how can I get Spear of Fury working. Um, I'm actually somewhat interested in... Uh, having something else. I do have copies of Sakura. I'm going to try just sticking Sakura on her and just I don't know how well she'll use it, but...
Uh, no, she's too. She's got too much energy requirement. That doesn't seem like a good idea. I think I'll just go ahead and stick Repost back on her. I don't know. I've done a lot of juggling stuff around, but that seems fine. I don't know how much she'll be able to make a use of it is the thing. Is there actually something in strength that would be better? Like, body blow is... Like, the thing is, she only has seven strength, so her strength is pretty weak. Uh, in terms of being useful for doing things like damaging enemies. Yeah, this feels all right. Repost feels a little underwhelming, maybe. Zealot's Fire is probably not worth it against destroyers and stuff. I'm inclined to swap him over to a copy of Mend Ailments, because I should have a... Yeah, I have a bajillion of those. Mend Ailments longer recharge means that the AI doesn't spam it as much, which I have found to be somewhat favorable. I think a Shield Guardian makes sense to run here. I like that reasonably well. Just some additional defensive support there. Um... Hmm. <laughs> I go for your smiting prayers, which would make some of this stuff a little bit weaker. He's like so heavily in into prot right now, but they're also just kind of fine where they're at. I wish I had a more interesting Smiting Prayers Elite to use, but we're just going to stick to the Sickness of Judgment. Um, yeah, I think this is probably going to be fine. Song of Restoration is a little underwhelming to me. I do need to swap out Blazing Spear for something. That's That's important. Probably Wild Throw. I do kind of want Spear of Lightning or something. But I also have... I, mean, I could do something like the Power is Yours. To lower some of those costs. I run my own Course of Restoration. Maybe I am better off in command? I don't know. I'm going to just stick to where I'm at for the moment. Obviously, I have Heroic Refrain. I could try running Heroic Refrain bar, but meh to that. Um, okay. This should be fine. I think I'll just go ahead and roll with this team for now. We're going to be fighting a bunch of destroyers, which is part of why I was wanting to do a bunch of shifting of my party for. Who goes there? Uh, because it turns out destroyers are immune to burning, so I wanted to get burning off of my bar. But they also have extremely high fire defense, so he would be doing piddling damage with Zealot's Fire. So it would just not be worth using... I'm going to get some dust out of these Vitir Essences. Nope, well, somebody's got a stack of dust now. Somebody's me. Non-max adept. I love this game, but there's so many little things that would just make it just a little bit better.
And I gotta say, one of them would definitely be a better way of getting weapon mods. Who sent you? Can I have sent myself? Does that work? Hmm. Because the other thing that I could do that I'm not against is I could switch things around so that way I was doing Onslaught for my Elite. If I did that, I could, I could not use Save Yourselves, though. Um, I think I want to go this direction. And I have... I had at some point a spear that I was keeping around because it had a uh, enchanting mod on it, but I may have used that. No, it's right here. I kind of want to swap my zealous spear suffix to be that, but I also kind of don't want to mess with it right now. It would be good for... Um, Onslaught is the main reason why I'd want to do that. Because you want Zealous with Onslaught to be able to help with energy management, but you also want it to last longer, so. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to roll with this. We're going to see how things go. I don't know how well Mending Refrain will stay up, but we'll find out. Um... And let's let's go. Just click on Talcora there, so that way her effects are above Mirian's thing. If I could put the like cancel thing underneath Mirian, that'd probably be a little better, but I don't think I have that much fine control. Why are you here? Uh, because I need to go fight some Norn who are chilling over there. But yeah, I do want to go this way. Yeah, we don't have enough run speed buffs to be able to keep that up indefinitely. We'd need um, both incoming and fallback or something like that to have the 10-second cycling at the current like setup. We have a 20-second cycle on charge, so that's just not going to keep up 100%. I believe there's a Vitir spawn around here that maybe we can avoid. I think we've avoided them, so that's nice. I hit the wrong bar or wrong scale, but that's okay. It's interesting how even when Bip is around, that doesn't necessarily mean your energy is amazing. At some point, I should run a Shield of Deflection bar on this guy just because I love Shield of Deflection. Kind of more than the skills worth. <laughs> Never anger a norn. Why are you here? Yep, pitiful number of kills. That sounds about right. Plus 100 armor is some serious damage reduction, by the way. That's like. 20 some odd percent damage that you're taking. Because the first, like, every 40 armor halves the damage that you take, so plus 100 is going to be, so the plus 80 is going to be um, quarter damage, like literally a quarter of the damage that you'd, you'd take previously. So then there's an additional 20 on top of that. It's just absolutely absurd damage reduction against things that are not armor ignoring.
Of course, there's a lot of armor ignoring damage, but... Here come the destroyers. Of course, destroyers just come with uh, absolutely absurd amounts of armor, so they're naturally good at mitigating a lot of stuff. Uh, turns out they're bad at mitigating mesmers, though. Huh. Why doesn't she ever use course? I guess we don't really need it, strictly speaking, but... Yeah, as I kind of suspected, her energy is kind of bad. Did I see a drop over, over here? I don't think so. Are you hunting something? Hey, salty grease. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Hope you're doing well today. Oh, I don't know if anybody saw these, but I added and I added those emotes. Ooh, that's fun. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of crab. I assume. How does Raven's Point go, even? Yeah, of course. I don't like tip culture in America. It's here. There's not a whole lot I can do about it, but I am not fond of it. But you know, it's fun to do that sort of thing for special occasions. Why am I... Oh, yeah, that's all the more energy I get. Huh. I personally find tips very confusing. It's, there's like this whole unspoken code of when you're supposed to tip. And I don't know how you're supposed to learn it. But hey, Dead on Stick. Good to see ya. Thank you very much. I don't know if you saw these, but I added. Ooh, thank you very much for the resub. I really, really appreciate that. I'm typing. I added those guys. I don't know if you saw me mention that or not. <laughs> yeah, I really, really appreciate the the resub. Nine months. Okay. Yeah, it's it's like it's it's this thing where it's like supposed to reward. Yeah, I think at one point in time it was like 10%, and then it was like 18%, and then 20%. I don't know. I I usually, around where I am, we have a sales tax of 10%, so I usually will just double the tax. <laughs> uh, not that I go out to eat very often, but... Um, indeed. I, I'm more of a spear paragon with some motivation on the side, but... Okay, it's it must be like a luck week or something because I am getting way too many lock picks for it to be coincidence. Or at least it feels like that. This is the second one I've gotten today. From like a drop, to be clear, I got. Uh, 
Got one earlier from a quest. But yeah, there's like other situations where you're supposed to tip like, oh, this person is, uh, one, one that comes to my mind is, um, when we go to the airport, like as a family, we'll typically park in a, another parking area that's like a little bit of ways from the park, from the airport. And then they have the like shuttle vans that'll take you to the airport then from there. Uh, and so we usually use that service. Um... And, you know, my dad always tips the, the driver. And I'm like, okay, how, how are you supposed to know that you're supposed to tip this person? And that sort of stuff. And it's, 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 I find it, frankly, somewhat perplexing. Yeah. I feel like... I feel like, you know, I expect that to be a position where they're getting paid a proper... Uh, but again, my assumption is that people are being paid a proper wage in America. And that... I mean, that's uh, that's fraught with... Issues. Or, go with me on this, I don't get the Raven Blessing from the Shrine because Raven Blessing is terrible and I hate it. I think I'll go with that option. Because, like, here's the thing, is if people are relying on tips for their livelihood, I want to tip them. But I also don't want that to be the case. And, I don't know. It's, um... It feels like tips are an excuse for employers to underpay employees is really what it feels like to me. Just from a um, structural standpoint, I guess. I need to move, so I'm stopping obstructed. often she's actually casting divine healing when we all need healing. Yeah, this is the problem with America. Uh, or That's maybe a bit of a strong statement. Something that I feel is kind of frustrating here in America is I feel like we have a lot of things that like are bonuses that then become ingrained into the process and then kind of like become op like default operating procedure. Um, yeah, from Europe, uh, the American tipping culture is starting to seep in here too. Proper minimum wage is still mandatory here though. The online food delivery services are starting with online tipping as a default option. Part of it is we're exporting our culture too in America. Yeah, that's been my impression as well. Like, um, I remember when... There was some implication that tipping could even be slightly uh, offensive, potentially. I don't know. We, we In 2013, my family took a trip to Europe. We went to uh, Paris, Florence, and Rome. It's, this is just me rattling off the major sort of places we stayed. But um, I feel like I remember seeing in something or hearing in something that, like, tipping is, like, should be treated very differently. Um, but like, like in the U S for example, my understanding is part of the reason why our healthcare system is absolutely as bonkers as it is, is because during world war two, they had wage caps and employers competing for employees, uh, to get around that offered benefits packages. And then that, yeah, that's exactly something agrees. That's kind of something that I've heard. So uh, to get around um, wage caps, the employers started um, offering benefits packages. And that just kind of became a, a thing that then got baked in. 
Um, it's also like uh, in and and so that's how we got the employer based healthcare system that is absolutely horrendous because we kind of like backed into it where it was like oh benefits packages were a bonus and then they kind of became the default standard somehow um and then my understanding is that like social security numbers were never meant to be an id number and we just kind of backed into them being some sort of like national id number um like my dad had his social security number used as like a student identification number in like high school or something or college or something i'm not quite sure but like it was never meant to to be an identification number and it never had the security measures built into it that you'd want and so we've got this weird system where social security numbers are somehow both a username and a password which is like the least secure thing you can do uh it's terrible and we frankly need to fix it but like also how do you get everybody to fix it but those sorts of things aren't high priority for the federal government. The high priority for the federal government is uh, political theater so people can get reelected while actually not accomplishing much. Yes, I'm cynical. <coughs> Hopefully, that sudden cough did not uh, get in all your ears. I suddenly realized I was not hydrating my throat properly. Apologize for... Uh, that <sighs> this is where it's going to be like oh talk to Olaf to get the raven blessing and I am going to not do that because I don't want it Hey, Salty Grease, thank you very much for the... Oh, Dead on Stick gifted Salty Grease a subscription. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. No, I'm not going to get the Raven Blessing. <laughs> now you, too, can enjoy the power of my incredibly inconsistent emote visualization scheme. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's noticed the sub badge thing, but it's actually based upon uh, the cape logo. But then it goes through the uh, the rarity colors, so it starts off at white, and then it goes to blue, uh, yellow, or blue, purple, yellow, and green. So. Cool. Means I did my job in my pixel art attempt. Yep, <laughs> that would be why. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Mmm. That makes sense. Yeah, here come the destroyers. I don't know how Jorah managed to avoid getting knocked down there, but I'll take it. A tremor, please. Great game. Like I, as much as I enjoyed um, the Guild Wars One randomizer I did last week, it is always nice to come back to Guild Wars. Ah, gotcha. I 
think there's one more. That doesn't matter. I'm not going to fight any more enemies. The door is open. Understandable. My impression is that uh, the quality of the boss has a huge impact on how people feel about their job. That spear took a while to land. I think we're getting barraged a lot here. I also suspect I'm... Nope. I think I just ended up somehow running off to the side. Well, I hope you're able to find something with a much better boss. I've been hearing about... All of these, like, surveillance systems that companies have been installing in their, like, for work from home stuff. And it's like, wow, what sort of dystopian nightmare is this? But I also suspect there's a lot of, um, people who kind of don't really have a job that needs to be done. So they have to kind of justify their existence. I don't know. I, I get the sneaking suspicion that there's too many administrators in America because everybody is told to get a business degree for a good paying job. Uh, and then you have too many people with a business degree, but they know how to talk themselves into a job. This is my suspicion. I have absolutely no evidence of this. Although, from what I've heard, uh, hospitals and universities both have way too many administrators in them. Mm. I bet a lot of the HVAC, like the for the HEPA filter type stuff, got a boost with due to the pandemic. A little. Hmm. I kind of want to wait to see if this guy lightning reflexes. Are to some there it is. No, I was pretty sure they had it. I just then again, I have the um, I have Wild Low on Jora, so she can help with that. CO two sensors. Oh, interesting. So what happens is that uh, spaces get um, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, good destroyer core. I need several of those, and while I have some in my bank, I am also theoretically trying to slowly build up towards uh, destroyer gauntlets for my female dervish. Yeah, no, for sure. More if you're exercising, I imagine. Yeah, that's how it goes, isn't it? Interesting. So, yeah, because then you you have decreased quantities of oxygen in the atmosphere, and that can lead to lead to like lightheadedness and headaches and stuff, right? Yeah, that makes sense. I know before the pandemic, I had a um, very part-time tutoring job where I was in a very small room that probably had poor ventilation. That makes sense. Takes a while to get to enough concentrations. Interesting. Wonder how the ventilation in my room is. Our house is kind of um bad ventilation because all of 
like we have no internal like we have we have ducts obviously that um that send uh like air from the furnace and and whatnot uh air conditioner if it's if that's on but we have uh ducts for that but we don't have internal like ducts for um like cold air returns or whatever now in in our previous house that we had which was a newer house um but in an area that was much cheaper to live in um we had that sort of internal cold air returns that would allow air to kind of normalize across the house but here, not so much. Um, which means that it can kind of get stuffy in rooms and things. Yeah, that's kind of what I assume. Actually, I actually have my window slightly cracked right now. It doesn't surprise me. I don't know if we actually have... I, don't, I doubt that we have a um, carbon dioxide detector. I know we have carbon monoxide stuff, obviously, for safety reasons, but I don't think we have carbon dioxide, and it would be interesting to... Um, yeah. To, uh, to have a detector to kind of see where that's at. I need to go turn this quest into SIF. Never anger a norn. Him lad's a good skill. Are you hunting something? Um, I am going into Jagged Moraine, so I'll probably try to take out the first two here. Avar is not bad. Interesting. I've seen, like, handheld ones and stuff, but... Majority of residences have minimum to no outside air supplements. Yeah. Otherwise, the door pressure will be noticeable. Huh. Yeah, that makes sense. Gotcha. Oh, right. How do they actually detect carbon dioxide anyway? I guess it's the sort of thing they just take for granted that they're able to do, but... Um, I don't think I need to make any bar changes. Var the Fallen has... Yeah, and then Whiteout's got that, but I don't think I need to worry about those. Okay, let's just go. Oh, wait. um, Have I gotten... Yeah, Undroth Blast Rock, because I should pick up the things from him. Because Crack out here is out here. He might have a skill that's worth capping. I'm not sure. You seek the dwarves? NDIR. I'm guessing the IR is something with infrared. Yeah, I'm not going to look at stuff on this, but... Because uh, I keep my web browser closed for better computer performance. Highly accurate carbon dioxide measurement. So they're able to kind of detect... I'm guessing carbon dioxide has a way it diffuses something or whatever. I'm not super knowledgeable on those things, so just kind of be speculation. Um, I'm going to check to see if... Crack Flame Whip has a super notable elite. Devastating Hammer? Okay, not something I care about. Interesting he goes from being a monk with Mark of Protection and Sorrow's Furnace to a warrior with Devastating Hammer. <laughs> but here we are. Non-dispersive infrared sensor. Hmm. You need me. Don't 
Don't trip is nice. Nice option to have. It's light with certain wavelength within the infrared spectrum. Yeah, that makes sense. Who goes there? I wonder if I should change Acolyte Jin's bar at all. Gotcha. So it becomes kind of a good way of determining how much it's... Uh, Like how much is there by how bl much is getting blocked. Uh, so you have to have a... Um, oh, I forget what humidity sensors... Hygrometer? Is that the right term? Something like that, I think. Do you have to have one of those in there too to be able to calculate that to do the compensation? Yeah, and that's what a barometer. So you have to have several different types of sensors in there to be able to get accurate information that it sounds like. Hang on, I need to be making sure I'm paying enough attention here to target the enemies that need to be targeted. So it's a combination of like several different sensor technologies to be able to compensate for... Com Pounding factors. That's interesting. It's a sort of like real world messiness that like makes sense, but like if you're not dealing with it, you don't think about it. You're just like, oh yeah, it just somehow determines how much CO2 is in the atmosphere. It's like, well, how does it actually do that though? Like, turns out that's kind of a complicated thing to do. have you been doing lately, Dead on Stick? It's been a little while since I've seen you around. Glad you're able to drop by today. <laughs> it is it is absolutely true. Yeah, the the amount of like technology to be able to get stuff from like across the world and stuff is crazy impressive. Like, it's that sort of thing of, like, this is what human beings can accomplish. That's that's really so neat. Doing well. Playing some Battletech-related games. Um, uh, job's going well. Electrical engineer, software developer. I'm glad you enjoyed that. You're getting a lot of C sharp experience too now. Good old C sharp. I I'm looking forward to working in C sharp more again. I've been doing a lot of JavaScript due to working with RPG Maker MV. Is BattleTech the um, like Mech Warrior series? I was thinking it was, so. I really liked Mecha Warrior 4 Vengeance back in the day. Uh, I remember, I, I don't know how well you can see this on my wrist right here. Yeah, right here. I have a scar on my wrist where I had a cyst removed, a ganglionic cyst. Um, and I remember... After having that removed, the smell of iodine while I was playing Mech Warrior 4, controlling I had a, a really nice joystick, and controlling the um, uh, throttle like there's a th a, th a throttle like thing that is controlled with my elbow, 
as because I needed to keep my arm up <laughs> while I was controlling the mech with the rest of the joystick. <laughs> that sounds pretty neat. I really like the designs of a lot of the mechs and stuff. It's a really cool property. I I know there's like a Mech Warrior Five or something. Um, yeah, a lot of people were super into like two and three. But yeah, four was the the one that I really was the one that I played and and grew to love. I have somewhere around here some for a, a um like a uh, RTS, a Mech Warrior RTS, like Mech Commander or something that I never really played and I probably should. I have way more games that I haven't really played. Um, I have so many games that I haven't really played, and, and I should, but here I am playing Guild Wars more <laughs> because I like it, and it's nice and comfy, and that's what I'm in the mood for. Doliak Prod Staff. That's an interesting name. And I retained my lockpick. That's nice. Yeah, is MechWarrior 5, like, more free-to-play or something? I don't... I haven't looked into it that much. I just, I really like their designs. Um, Never. I was always more of a Daishi than Atlas person. For the real heavy mechs. Man, I'm getting flashbacks to... Oh, okay. I'm getting flashbacks, though, to... Uh, I'm assuming TBS stands for, like, Tech Battle System or something. Um, but, yeah, I uh, had a lot of fun playing that game. Mech Warrior Online must be the one I'm thinking of. Oh, turn-based strategy. Okay, that, that makes sense, too. I <laughs> wasn't 100% sure what it was standing for offhand. Um, I think it must be Mech Warrior Online that I heard about, then. Yeah, because I remember going in and loading up some of those missions in uh, Mech Warrior Four, and just like making a bunch of stuff. More of the like free to free to play mode. I, free to play has the wrong modern connotation, but the mode where it's just like free free play, I guess, rather than campaign or whatever, where you just like load up random missions. I did a lot of like one of the earlier ones on the moon. I had fun. Oh, right. These things are not technically summoned creatures. They're just bone fiends that are, exist in the world. Yeah. I like the Daishi way better than the Atlas, personally. Even though they're both hunter tunners. I don't know why. Yeah. That was Splinter Weapon going off and not... Uh. You'd think Holy Spear would be really sweet here, and then turns out a lot of these are not s technically summoned creatures, and then just isn't. Interesting. Yeah, I feel like I remember the clan stuff all being better than um, Inner Core. I liked the design of it better too. I the Atlas like has an intimidating design. Um, I mean, that's definitely how things played out in the game. Um, like, they had better missile packs and stuff. So. Uh, good shield. Hey, Max Fortitude. I might use this skull shield then. On this character. Instead of this herald. Heraldic shield. Yeah. Yeah, because wasn't the um the Atlas Ooh, Max Enchanting on staff. That's really good too. I'm getting some good good stuff here. Man, and now I'm just wanting to freaking play Mech Warrior again. 
This is a pity we don't have the we don't have a nice joystick. I I would really like to get to the point of getting in like a nice like proper like joystick. Um And I'd also like Let's see. I need to How do I want to roll this here? So I want to go get wide out up there. I need to go talk to Eagle. Oh, we'll just go to Eagle the back way. That's work. That'll work. Um, but I'm getting like so much nostalgia for <laughs> Mech Warrior right now. It did a lot of really cool stuff. I really loved designing mechs. Granted, when I first, like, a lot of the time that I was kind of initially playing it when I was a kid, I used cheat codes to turn off things like, uh, I think I probably used, like, invulnerability and infinite heat cheat codes, but. Yeah, I have picked up mercenaries, but I haven't at one point in time. I have no idea where it is on hard drives at this point. Uh, but I need to kind of poke around to figure that out if I wanted to. To play that. I probably still have my Mech Warrior 4 discs lying around, actually. This game was cool. I liked Rock Raiders. There we are. Here's uh here's disc one. Mech Warrior Vengeance disc one. I definitely downloaded it while it was available. I just don't know where it ended up. The mercenaries thing. Like I have a, but I I've backed up my downloads in a spot, so I could probably hunt it down there if it's not like normally installed or whatever. Mech Mech Warrior Four was just it was such a. I really have a lot of fond memories of building mechs in that system. It gets, I, I mean, it's it's been a consistent thing for me. I love variety. I love customization. I love build craft, and like that's part of why I love. That's part of what I liked so much about um, Mech Warrior. Uh, for that's something that I love about Guild Wars One. Um, I've enjoyed it in Pokemon. I've enjoyed it in. Um, uh, Dark Souls games. Dark Souls games need more save slots, as an aside. Like, 10 slots is just not enough. Uh, I don't know if Elden Ring will have more or not. I also still don't know uh, if I'll... be able to um, if I'll try to stream Elden Ring or not when it comes out I was able to pre-order it thanks to my sister's generosity but I have not made a decision because like I don't know how well my hardware will be able to handle Elden Ring and trying to stream it I did stream my first playthrough of Dark Souls 3 um, and so that, like, you can go find my first playthrough of Dark Souls 3 on my YouTube channel if you want to dig through my VODs enough. Um, I'm curious to hear it about the difference between the Innovators and the Perfectors. Uh, but anyway, the... Um, and I, I imagine Elden Ring is going to be a step up on, like, system needs... I mean, it's, what, four years later or something like that? Uh, five? Then, uh, then Dark Souls 3, so I'm not sure how well... My graphics card is getting a little long in the tooth, is all I'm saying. Like, ideally, I'd want a second computer so I could have one PC to be, like, 
running the streaming software with uh, capture card and another to actually run stuff on, but that is a bit out of my reach at present. Actually, a lot out of my reach at present. How do I want to get to... Okay, do these polar bears want to just fight us or not? It looks like not. I prefer not. We don't need to fight them. Okay, now they're chasing me. What's going on, bears? Do you or do you not want to fight us? Yeah, I think I have like an I-5, though. So I have a bit of an older... Like this, I built this computer quite a few years ago now. Are you hunting something? I don't mind getting hunt rank up here. Okay, Eagle, I need your quest, please. Hey, I'll actually have Jorah with me for this one. What are they at at this point? Is it I-7? Is that where they're at? There are people who can be creative and make new builds or stratagems. And then there's people who kind of, like, refine them. Because, yeah, like, with speedrunning, there's the people who, like, there's some people find Rouse and other people, like, polish stuff or whatever. Yeah. It does make a certain amount of sense. Okay. We're at a nine now. Right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm at I5. Which doesn't win Windows 11 require I7? <laughs> of course it does. Okay, so it's it's... A little bit more complicated than that. I think I have two cores. Oh, uh, okay. So it's a different thing. I I don't know how any of this stuff works, apparently. I'm not a big hardware person. Gotcha. Um, what do I even have? I have a um, i5-4430. Uh, CPU at, and I have two instances of 3.0 gigahertz, so I'm guessing I have two cores. Um, this is the, yeah, this is the, the specific line. Yeah, and I'm, like, I only have 16 gigabytes of RAM on this computer. And I forget my graphics card. Yeah, 16 gig gigs is fine. I wouldn't mind more, as always. But uh, I think at this, I'm like at the point where um, the big things that I need, like, like I, I probably just need a lot of upgrades. Yeah, that makes sense. Isn't there, like, DDR5 as well? Or am I confusing that with something else? I know that they've improved... Or at least my understanding, anyway, is that there's been improvements to, um, like, solid-state connective stuff. Broke another on this ornate scythe, but at least it's a gold. I always say, whenever I break a lockpick, if it's a gold. Okay, DDR5. Gotcha. Because there's, like, some sort of, like, MDX or something for our hard drives that's, like, faster than solid state or something is my impression. But, again, I'm not... It's not something I'm particularly knowledgeable about. I've just seen other people tweeting about it. Yeah. 
again, I would like to get a new computer uh, at some point here. It's just... I, yeah, NVMe, that's what I think I'm thinking about. Gotcha. So it's the connective interface to some extent and not just the... Um, Yeah, that makes that makes sense. Because I do have an SSD in this computer at this point, but it is connected by uh, SATA. <laughs> oh man, that reminds me. I saw a gold-plated optical cable. Like, you know, the ones that use infrared uh, fiber optics or whatever, but it was gold-plated. It's like, this does nothing. Oh, it was so ridiculous. It's like, who would be using this technology? Oh, yeah, that's a huge jump up then. But, yeah, it'd be like, who would be using this technology that doesn't know that gold plated doesn't make any sense? Because you want the gold plating for electricity, not for... Yeah. That's true. Um, Yeah, I don't... I'm, I feel like my SS, SSD, solid state drive, yeah. SSD is plenty fast. The It definitely, my CPU is, is getting out of date. My GPU is also. Like, I don't have the specs for that one offhand. I could pull up DX Diag. Uh, what is... This will this will take a, a second. Um... Yes, that is that. Cool, DirectX version 12. I'm looking for... Uh, it says four CPUs. Um, yeah, I have a GeForce GTX 760, which I think is pretty out of date. Um... I have... About four gigs of VRAM, which is part of the thing that sold me on this particular one back when I got it years ago now. But I think a GeForce GTX 760 is probably getting pretty out of date at this point. Uh. I mean, it's, it's chucking along, but... Hey, let's see, Mikey Ven Ventu? Thank you very much. I do not believe I speak that language, but I recognize good anniversary of affiliation. I'm pretty sure. Buon anniversario de affiliazione? Something like that? <laughs> okay, that's really funny. <laughs> uh, that tiny duck is cute. <laughs> Hi, John Skaggy. Welcome. Uh, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, because the... I don't know about Portuguese, but I believe Spanish uses, like, de instead of d. I don't know. Um... Yeah. Well, welcome. I'm glad you're here. And I should not be standing in meteor shower. And does French use like do or something instead? I don't know. I don't know any I know very little about French. My sister was an Italian major in college, so I've heard more about Italian than I have some of the other languages. Just because of that. Uh but it also means I am feeling extremely self conscious about how little I actually know about Italian. 
<laughs> That's a lot of years of Latin. Understandable. I have tried learning Japanese a couple of times, but I never got super far. continue making our way through here. I feel like there is like quite a few different ways to go through here and I don't think I have a consistent route that I take. Hey, thank you very much for the subscription. I really appreciate that. Uh, I see Dead on Stick gifting subscriptions around. Thank you. It means a lot. I spirit of anguish. I wish I had Holy Spirit up at that moment. 81 gold coins. Don't mind if I do. Hmm. I'm feeling there's compelling arguments for... Hexbreaker Uria. Do I have a spot where I'd want to stick that? I could see putting it on if I want to change stuff around. Knocking me down. I like Crossfire. Yeah, it's it seems like a just a solid bow attack. Like if I want just a generic solid bow attack, it seems like one of the solid choices for it. It's it's a relatively low recharge, decent damage, only 5 energy. And uh has a nice unblockable clause. Exactly. You guys really want to go kill our spirits, apparently. I would have to dig to see what Power Shot used to be. Because I know Mana Guy posted the, um, well, I have Holy Spear up. You know I got to do it. Uh, I know Mana Guy posted the um, uh, info from, it used to be just, yeah, that makes sense. <sighs> Friggin' Ranger Spike ruined a lot of skills, I feel like. Or, like, a lot of skills, a lot of rangery things got nerfed because of it, or whatever. That that sentiment. Okay, let's stand somewhere that isn't getting coated in fire. I don't know if it was nerfed for our spike, but it feels like the sort of thing that would have been nerfed for our spike reasons. Ignite arrows also just feels like it could it could really stand a buff to me. I'm not quite sure what I'd be looking for exactly, but like damage from us just seems way too low. 
synergizes nicely with Mark Rodgort, though. I enjoy that. I am not excited about, however, needing to pick up Earth and Blessing, as I don't really care for the Blessings. Yeah, that's the thing. And, like, because it's fire damage, so many things resist it. Kindle Arrows also feels a bit weak to me. But I feel like anything that made our spike better got nerfed. And then just never buffed when they could split things. Okay, well, where do I want to put this? Um, I think I'll just put it over Lyric of Zeal, I guess. That uh, sounds what I'd expect. Yeah, it's crazy. I feel like... Um, You know, I'm just ring up Acolyte Jin so I don't get skill names wrong. Uh, Experts Dexterity plus uh, with 16 expertise and 13 mark, like base mark monster or whatever. But Experts Dexterity plus um, Zhaozhen Shot, Point Blank Shot, and Experts Expert Focus does pretty good at outputting DPS. But yeah, Bo just it's um its fire rate is so low that it needs higher damage on its individual things to actually, like, function well. And a lot of its stuff just feels like it's kind of un underwhelming. I'm going to go daggering these guys. I think I made these zealous, so that's kind of nice. What's this one even do? Okay, that is the one I thought. It's just I need was not adjacent. The main thing you have with a bow over spear is you have access to barrage and volley and technically incendiary arrows for some AOE options. So those are kind of nice, I guess. Take that, barrier. But yeah, I I, don't know, I feel like Bo needs some something. But then I also feel like a bunch of the professions could Sandy have more skills. I know, right? I wish that they were had been proper forms. Like I wish Earth and Blessing instead of giving me a skill bar had been more of a buff skill, like what the Norn actually get out of bear form because like I'm not interested like I love build craft in this game ergo why would I want to play with a skill that's literally just erasing build craft like I don't so um I'm I don't really like the blessings so if they had just had like the stat thing that's on them um, where I'm, like, getting plus 200 armor and plus 200 maximum health and stuff, I would have been way more... And, like, appearances and stuff, I'd been way more into it. Hey, Scrub Wave. Good to see ya. Yeah, Urson White Arrow was terrible. Like, that becoming meta was awful. What res that guy? Is that thing I flush my flesh? I legitimately don't know. Offhand. Oh, yeah, where you just bring it ahead of time so you don't have to go to the shrine. That makes sense. That'd be the only time I'd want to use it. Because you can ignore the blessings in the other two, but you have to bring it for this one. How 
much of a discount do I get on that? Six? Okay, so that makes the 10 energy skill play pay for itself. Wish I had access to my other adrenaline skill, but I had to replace it with a certain needed elite for this, or needed skill for this thing. I definitely feel like this team has been stronger since I switched to this. I don't know how much she's spreading around Mending Refrain. Ah, it's on some people. Okay, yeah, it's on a decent number of the party, actually, now that I look. Like, three or four. Two or three, something like that. Okay, we may have over-aggroed slightly here uh, while I wasn't paying attention. Okay. There, I've I've saved the party with uh, save yourselves clearly. Yeah. Wish I had my energy gain shout. It's always so amusing that they basically slash ranked you. What am I... Okay, these Dominators are causing me serious problems. I need to be paying attention to them. I did accidentally over aggro here. It's very easy to do. But I really need to be focusing on their casters here. I've been distracted by their warriors, but their warriors are more mitigatable. The casters are resurrecting things, and that's not good. What the heck are you doing all the way over there anyway, Acolytion? Okay, let's get this boss out of here. We're actually tanking this surprisingly well. I'm surprised we haven't collapsed yet. Like, we've had several deaths, but... Uh, not actually that many. Gwen maybe twice and, like, Mirian once or something. Not, not really even sure. I just know I've seen... I feel like I've seen Ogden go down a couple times, but maybe that was just once on him as well. Like, what I'm saying is uh, Unyielding Aura is really good for Resurrects, <laughs> is what I'm saying. Because people have only been, like, down for, like, moments. Okay, Dominators do need to go down. Uh, they have Resurrection skills, by which I mean they have Resurrection Chance. And they ain't afraid to use it. Man, those Spears of Anguish are so fragile, it's hard to actually get my skill off on them. I think we need... Nope, that was enough. Yeah, I know the feeling. I've, again, uh, for those who were not here earlier, I have a new mattress uh, on order that I'm kind of waiting for it to arrive. And I am really looking forward to it because I'm hoping it'll help me sleep a lot better. As I've come to realize, my current mattress is not great. You need me. I'm going to grab that skill. I ain't going to do it right now because... I got other priorities. I'm like turning forked swords into iron and stilettos into iron and talking to some dwarves in an underground tunnel.
little flamberge. Okay, let's put some of these things away. These I'm going to hang on to for now. Um, the staff I'm going to just toss in my bank, I think. Okay. I should ID all these other things that I'm going to be selling. Do I need a scythe defense mod? Maybe? I don't know. I'm going to hang on to this so that way I can shop it around on other characters. I have opened up some bank space recently, so I can do that. Um, I need to grab two destroyer cores. Two, please. Thank you. I need to give those to a dwarf who wants to learn more about destroyers. All right, let's uh, give Omond Never anger these in exchange for some funds. A uh, nice nine 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 there. All right, so. Northern Allies is complete. Let's go see Jalus for my reward. What? Oh, a Zaishin mission bonus. That's fun. I have no idea what the Zaishin mission today is either, actually. I should check. Um, Generous Horde. I ain't doing that right now, but... Hero's Ascent, that one's not bad to do uh, for some sweet, sweet points. But we ain't doing that either. And Ergo's is the bounty. Ferndale's is the vanquish. Interesting. I would have th thought that it was... Um, with the lockpick drops that I got, I, f I feel that I, I was expecting something else, but here we are. Here we are. The thing is, for me, it's like 3.48, and I didn't get up... Like, I got up, like, uh... Was it quarter till 11? Something like that. So I've not been up that long today. I guess I have 348 over here. But the point stands, I've not been up that long today, and for some reason I am... Well, the reason being that I've just not been sleeping well lately. Never anger uh, I'm feeling tired. <laughs> it doesn't help that the sun starts to go down about now, because I'm far enough north. Um... And it's just, it's overcast and raining right now. So it's just dark outside. Like, not dark, dark, but it's, it's kind of dark. And uh, that definitely makes it feel like it's later than it is. I don't like it getting dark. Because, like, as we get closer to the solstice and whatever and Christmas and all that, um, it gets dark at, like, like sundown is, like, or something p.m. It is just miserably early. And what also doesn't help is I, I've i been finding myself on this, like, schedule that I just can't quite seem to escape of getting to bed. Like, ideally, I am I think I'm falling asleep somewhere around, like, 3 to 5 a.m., but I'm trying to get to bed closer to, like, somewhere around 2 to 3 a.m., but I've been, like, waking up closer to, like, noon lately. Uh, so I'm missing, like, half the daylight, which is also kind of miserable. Not that I typically go outside all that much, but I like being able to have the window open and seeing daylight outside. I don't know. I I have this effect that I've realized of when it, it feels like it's um, dark and still outside. It starts to feel very lonely and somewhat anxiety-inducing. Uh, it makes me think a lot, actually, of um, 
series five of Doctor Who with uh, Matt, Matt Smith's first series when stars are starting to go out towards the end. And it's just like the loneliness of that is definitely something that I feel, especially since we tend to be very overcast here. I don't know why nighttime tends to get so still and quiet outside. It's just, it, in part, it's the effect of where I live. Like, we just don't have a whole lot of creatures making a ton of noise that I can hear through, like, my window, even if it's opened. Um, but we're also in an area where, like, with the winter, it gets dark really early, and um, it doesn't really snow here. Which, apparently, Hawaii's big island has a friggin' blizzard warning, I was seeing last night as I was heading towards bed. Uh, so that was bonkers weird. Um, but the uh, the lack of snow, like snow really does a lot to improve the feeling of dark winters to me. And uh, so the lack of snow kind of makes it more miserable, I think, than it would be if there was... Where's this lock chest? Oh, sure. Uh, than if there was... Uh... Oh, lockpick broke. Uh, but, like, if, if we had, like, snow and ice and stuff out there, I think I'd just feel more comfortable. I like precipitation in general, though, so at least it's kind of raining a little bit, like, right now. Uh, that helps. Okay, um... I want to talk to High Priest Alcar first, because he has the more immediate... Okay, let's not get too hung up on this guy. Has the more immediate quests. That's a 1450. That's usable, I guess. How does this cutscene even go? I haven't watched this in a while. Let's watch this cutscene for no good reason, other than I don't remember what it does. That's not my Gwen. Arise, Ogden Stone Healer. We thought you lost. How do you fare? We have killed many destroyers, sire. And you have raised an army to do this? This is my army, my liege. I think he's talking about us. Ogden has proved invaluable in battling the destroyers. We would have been lost without him. Yes. Yes, you have done well. Very well indeed. I am sorry I could not gather more allies, my liege. It is not the size of the army that matters, but the strength in their hearts. And you have gathered the strongest warriors in the land. Come. My forces have traveled far to reach you, but the road before us is longer and harder still. From here we shall launch our final assault on the destroyers. This will be our base. You have done well, Ogden Stone Healer. We are indebted to you and your allies. I have uh, a female paragon as well. I have a male and female of each uh, profession, at least. Uh, but I like I prefer female elementalist over male elementalist, but I still made one. Uh, and same with uh, Assassin. What news of the war? Thank you for my monumental tapestry. Um, did they change his voice actor? Does the wiki have any information about this? Would the wiki have any information about this? Feels like something they would have in... Hmm. Well, his voice actor in Eye of the North is Paul... Yeah, that's an I. It looks kind of like an L. Iding? But it doesn't say whose voice actor was in Prophecies. I feel like the voice is different. But... news of the war oh yeah i have 24 character slots um i have 
tripled up on assassin. Uh, I've tripled up on warrior and ranger. And no, I have I have four warriors because one's perma pre. You seek the dwarves. Uh, well, I did want this spell, but I don't want it right now. You seek the dwarves. Yes, I need to remember to friggin' use Alcar's alchemical acid because I have a real tendency to forget it. I don't think I care that much about the strength of an honor here. I think fourteen over fifty is is perfectly usable. By the by, it's I just do. uh, don't think I have any immediate need for it. I do want to, and I have a couple of like stuff banked up already, so I'm gonna sell this. Um, Orzar, can I do your quest now? Yes, I would like to do your quest now, please. You need me. Okay. I don't know why, but for some reason when doing this one, I like to go hide out over here and take out all the enemies that spawn here first. And then go into the middle. Oh, yeah. I need to remember to drop by the eye and activate this stupid. I, I dislike that thing because it means that you can't chain stuff together as smoothly as I would like. Um, and in particular, because you have to go back to it, you can't go immediately from completing this thing to, like, other stuff because you have to kind of have that come up in the middle. I don't know. I, I find it annoying. Oh, man. That Holy Spirit did his job. That's for friggin' sure. Hang on, I want to check something. How many copies of... Just the one, so I can only run the one over there. Okay. If I had another copy of Signet of Synergy, I would consider using it on Acolyte Jin. Probably tweaking her a little bit more to make that doable. Or, like, better. She doesn't have a whole lot of investment right now in motivation, so... Okay, I'm going to keep fighting these things if I don't take out this friggin' Nasher. I probably should have put Spear of Redemption on this bar instead of Wild Throw. I had Wild Throw just to try to help with... Um some of the blocking destroyers, but I th think Wild Blow on Jorah has proven to be good enough at dealing with um, that, that it's probably unnecessary. And having a lower adrenaline skill that I could use more regularly would probably be better for DPS. Hmm. A smite condition nightfall or I feel like it's an eye of the north skill. But I don't remember offhand. I'm gonna give myself twenty five eye of the north skills, uh for turning in this monumental tapestry, so I'm wondering if I can get smite condition then, because I'd rather have smite condition than mend ailment.
Yeah, actually, Jin's my character with the hardest energy right now. Hello. Welcome, Broody Trup. I am sorry I do not speak German, but I appreciate your uh, well wishes. And it's good to see you. That might be the automatic message. I have no idea if they... How they do any of that. At least I assume it's German. I could do my uh, poor attempt at trying to pronounce it. Let's see. Ein Partyhutchen zur Feier des Affiliate Dubliums? Oh, that was atrocious, I'm sure. At least it felt like it should be. I'd like to learn a little bit more about pronouncing German. I know that the thing that looks like a... Kind of like a beta is actually an S sound. <laughs> uh, which is very confusing. And unintuitive to an English speaker. But welcome, I'm glad you dropped by. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know what a skill booster league is, by the way, I probably should explain. Um, so it uses this program I made uh, that's oriz originally for codexes and then kind of spiraled out of control because I have a terrible tendency to have some scope creep. Uh, but it means it does a lot of cool stuff. And one of them is a skill booster league, which is inspired by booster leagues from trading card games. Primarily Magic the Gathering is where I'm familiar with it from, but I'm sure it could exist in other card games. Um, I want to find this monk. Okay, there we are. Uh, so the idea is you open booster packs, and you can kind of make up whatever rules you want. I'm only applying it to my heroes because the skill booster league style that I have come up with thus far is for uh, characters that aren't fresh. So um, this guy started off with the skill booster league and got new skills added uh, as he completed... Uh, as he entered into world regions and, and did other things like that. Uh, got heroes. Um, and so the um, the number in the corner is how many copies I can have across my party. And uh, otherwise, it's like, what skills do I have in this booster league? So, for example, I can only run one copy of Signet of Synergy across my entire party which is something that I was checking earlier because I kind of wanted to run a copy in Acolyte Jin, but I also wanted to be running one here on Mirian Yggdrasil uh, and could only uh, have the one, so I can't uh, run it on her if I'm going to play by my rules properly. So um, that is the short version of Skill Booster Leagues. Again, I will be getting more skills uh, when I turn in this Monumental Tapestry. Uh, so you'll kind of see that process sort of it pops up another window to show me what skills i acquired that window isn't captured so you don't get to see that unfortunately but uh that is what a skill booster league is uh if there are any questions i'm happy to answer them you need me. uh i will grab in the service of revenge i need to go to cephala to turn in some stuff too Okay, let's go turn in this monumental tapestry, get my skills, and get my inventory slot back. Uh, and do the vision watchy thing that I need to do. Interesting. The icon disappeared. I don't know why. Maybe it's only present in explorable zones? That would seem a bit peculiar. But it's also, like, because I'm running the Skill Booster League, that's why I'm running uh, Signet of Judgment. Uh, okay, it only appears to be in these... Uh, but that's why I'm running uh, Signal of Judgment on uh, Ogden. I've gotten a lot of useful skills in it, so it's not super restrictive at this point, but it is m still somewhat restrictive. This is super non-intuitive to me. I would have expected 
that you click on this to be able to view the visions, but it's actually look deep into the pool. I don't know if anybody else finds that to be somewhat unintuitive, but I do. I'm so used to the one thing being used to advance stuff that the other being what does it is kind of weird. Um, okay, so I've done this side. Uh, I have the devotion tapestry that I put up. Cool. Uh, let's put up the valor one, I guess. Well, that's going. I need to find Eye of the North Expansion. This is going to be 25. Add 25 skills. Um, Okay, I got Cure Hex. Another copy of Smiter's Boon. Healing Ribbon. Knee Cutter has some uses. We'll check to see what new stuff I got in just a second. Because, of course, I get the display that's like, here are the skills that got added, but I need to scroll down. So that's a bunch of new stuff. Knee cutter. Calculated risk is really nice to have in Illusion Magic. Um, Putrid Bile is good. Masochism is good to have. Glyph of Swiftness is... Some of these are less exciting than others. I do like Lotus Strike. Um, Way of the Master can do some interesting stuff. Signet of Deadly Corruption. This one's also potentially quite useful. Uh, Pure Wizardly Ming is one that I like quite a lot. This is a nice cleansing skill. Hasty Refrain, somewhat unexciting. I'm going to go ahead and sort these back into everything. Uh, but that's that's adding some skills. Salvage this elemental dust. Identify the short bow. Um, does it really matter which way I go first? Doesn't really feel like it. Okay, I do want to go to Cephala. I want to... Maybe I should just go do Sepulchre of Dragomar. Do I have the dungeon guide? No, I should... Oh, okay. Yeah, I should go pick that up too. Um, where am I in my reps? There is much to do. Thank you. Um. Okay, I want to go because I should have Norn rank one, so I should be able to unlock the buff from that. So I'm gonna go do that. Tire of the Scald. I also want to pick up a Master Dungeon Guide. Uh, because uh, apparently I do not have one. And it would be good to have one. I do want to give the Skull Mask something. The minus 20... F or the minus 5% is fine, but... Who goes there? Written Evidence. Thank you. Skills for my heroes. What can I? What can you give me? I mean, scourge healing is good to have. Uh, thanks. That'll do, I guess. I do need to do Magni's tournament, but I don't feel like doing that right now because I need to figure out what sort of solo build I want to run and all that sort of stuff. And eh. I'd rather not at the moment. Would be good if we go somewhere with destroyers so I can Alcar's alchemical acid them. Oh good, I have enough diamonds. I don't know why I have so many more onyx gemstones than I do diamonds. Does anybody know if there's like a big difference in their drop rate or something? It seems weird that I have them so why imbalanced. Sepulchre of Dragramar would be nice to do because it would allow me to complete the anything you can do. This one I do want to eventually do. I could go do that. That would give me Dwarven Stability and Snowstorm. Those would both be nice to have. This one's pretty straightforward. Do I have enough Dwarven Rep? 
Hang on, probably not, but it's worth checking. Okay, I do not. Okay, so that's irrelevant at the moment. Um, Let's go try to kill that Jotun. Um... Right, I wanted to put on Spear of Redemption. Same plus damage, but because it doesn't do the stance removal, it is way cheaper. Um, now, what I'm thinking is I might want Hexbreaker Uria, but I'm not sure what I'd want to remove in favor of it. I don't know. We're probably fine. Let's uh, take the south exit. Okay, Reuven. Give me this thing. Who sent you? These guys are a little concerning. And that they can hit quite hard. On the other hand, we do have weakness on Gwen. This is a spot where it really gets dangerous. You can aggro quite a few of these guys all at once and get absolutely destroyed. The thing is, even their casters are tanky, so... Holy moly, I'm getting absolutely wrecked by hexes. Yeah, that should hopefully create a little bit of space. That boss hits really freaking hard, though. Okay, I don't like how much people are dying. Oh boy, this is always going to just be difficult because uh, you don't want to aggro this many Jotun at once. It's just simply not good. It's not good for your health. You can see why I was thinking about Hexbreaker Aria, though. Come on, Jotun Blade Turner, die. Oh, well, that ain't gonna happen. I should probably drop Restore Life off of Jora. I think I don't want her having to try to run around to use that. Probably should just put something else on her. Um, I could see... Uh, she doesn't really need to remove Hex. She's pretty energy heavy as she is, but... Bottom right map piece, A. Eh? I think I'm probably going to head towards the CERN territory next. Let's see. That's all I need to do for the quest. I feel kind of obligated to take this guy down too, though. Hexbreaker Ballad would be an interesting skill. The next time an ally takes damage, that ally loses a hex. That would be really peculiar. Two? Huh. 
not the one that I only have one of. It's weird, though, because it's like unassigned loot. That does not close my Shunlai chest. Uh, let's go to Olofstead, because that's how we're going to leave to go to a certain lands. Yay! Should I work Vec into my party for going to certain lands? Part of me kind of wants to. I don't know how much I want to change things up, though. I do want to replace Restore Life on Jorah, though. Not sure with what, 100% just yet. Um... Shadow Step would actually be a decent idea. Do I have, like, Death's Charge? Allowing her to get into battle a little bit more swiftly is just beneficial, so... Uh, No, I do not. Hmm. Well, then. In that case... In that case, what do I have? I have some Shadow Prisons. I don't have any Dark Prisons, though. Well, I'm really limited on Shadow Steps here. I have Spirit Walk. That would be vaguely okay against the char? Depending upon how the AI rolls with it. Um... Hmm. It would let her get back to our party, which is not really what you need a warrior to do, <laughs> quite frankly. Uh... I could give her a copy of Remove Hex, but I don't think I need her, need slash want her doing that. Um... I could give her a copy of Antidote Signet. I mean, that seems reasonable. I'll just give her a copy of Antidote Signet. She doesn't have to use it much. I got three of them, so I might as well. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Um, I wonder how much I'm helping the party deal with some of this stuff. Like, Lyric of Zeal is nice. How much would Jins give at this? Four energy? Is that something that's worth looking into maybe swapping her over to? Hmm. Maybe. Part of what I'm wondering is if I want to go into command for some of the offensive shouts there, like Anthem of Envy, shout slash chance, and go for the eyes, of course, making crits happen is nice. I don't feel like it matters that much, though. I think I'm just going to stick where I'm at for the time being and just roll with this. I like Master of My Domain. I like that effect. Yeah, for right now, I'm 
content to be kind of more offensive spear sort of build, I think. Why are you here? Okay, I need to go over this way, though, because this is the way to um, move locks and excavations. We'll see the boss along the way. Probably. Cave born. So I guess Inga was born in a cave. Man, it would be really interesting if somebody was named after the location they were born and you got somebody who's like car born. You know, anything other than like hospital born or home born. Are you hunting something? Uh nope, I'm just heading on a path is all. I don't really need Jora to follow my lead 100%. Like, when she's trying to follow my lead, the issue that can happen is she uh, spends a lot of time swapping targets or things like that. Which I'm not really needing from her. Oh, yep. Mysterious the Mighty indeed shows up. I thought there's a decent chance that it, that might happen. a monk over there, is it? No, it's just a regular bison. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I wasn't ignoring something important. Uh, I would have liked to have gotten the green scythe from him, but he did not drop it, so here we are. It would have been nice, but... At least to have as an option for heroes, sort of thing. Don't know what his scythe actually stat wise does. Picks, yes, I am. More Jotun. I'm disappointed in everyone who could have stopped that. And yet didn't. 
I know I'm yawning a lot here. It's a side effect of insufficient sleep last night. Don't know how much people care. I'm trying to be quiet about it. Um. Yeah, a lot of the Jotun have armor ignoring stuff too. Hmm. Well, that was just rude. Clumsiness. Getting on me there. Now these guys, these guys care about armor. Jotun pelts. His Nick is collecting them. Next week, I believe. At least the Global Guild Wars Discord, the people post links for farming. Uh, the collectibles, and there is one for Jotun pelts that went up. So usually I post it the week before, so people can get started on it earlier. Um, hi, Pir Purifier crew member. You need me? Uh, you very minimally, but yes, I do want your your thing. I'm gonna go this way. I have no interest in trying to head towards Slaver's Exile. past the bridge troll. I think the bridge troll is a good bit further south, isn't he? Yeah, no, we're going across the Wrath Spew spot. Do I have... I'm not... I can't check what Mesmer spells I have. I am deeply not in a position to do that. I don't know if I captured Migraine or not in... Ah, oh, soothing images is miserable. I think this guy is crippling anguish. I know there's a migraine boss in Gad's encampment. That's pretty easy to get to. Yeah, I'll definitely want to change my party around when we're going that way, though, because there's so much blinds. I need to see what elites this guy has captured. I may at some point here want to do an elite. I don't know. Grabbing expedition, I guess. Capping. Capping expedition. That's what it would be. Self. Duh. odd zone to go through because it's got these like large things like I don't know it's not quite mountains but like large hills or whatever that uh 
create kind of a crisscross set of paths in the middle of them, which makes getting through it a little bit tricksy. A little bit tricksy indeed. Or at least not straightforward anyway. It kind of, there's no like straight path through is kind of what I'm saying. Kind of is along the bottom edge actually. Kind of. More so than some of the other places at any rate. I think I'm going to take a couple minute break when I get to Vlox's. I uh, think it'll be a good good opportunity to do so. Vlox's? No, I'm at Umbral Grotto, excuse me. The next town. We will be heading to Vlox's pretty soon, but I want to take a break before then. Get up stretch a little bit. Soul Feast is one of those skills that like is an interesting design and kind of ubiquitous among enemies, but not one that you tend to see among players much. Like as players, we tend to want to do other things with corpses than uh, gain 200 and some odd HP. That's really a good skill for enemies to use, you know? I see you over there, Price. It's an interesting question of when do you choose restore condition versus um, the, it's just a flesh wound. And it's just a flesh wound used to do something else. A lot of Paragon skills feel like they used to do something else to an extent. But I don't think I got enough. Why nope, I did. Me? I will take my 20 CERN reputation points and move on then. Haha. -ha. I don't have somebody that I'm queuing up to do polymock on. I feel like I do. Alright, I am going to do some stuff in here in a after I come back from the break, but I do want to take a short break now, so I'm going to get into a nice spot here uh, and do some dancing. And uh, I will be back in a couple of minutes. Please stick around.
Hello, I return. Uh, let's go. Turn these maps in. Uh, where did I have? Okay, well, I don't need to do anything fancy for that one. Okay, um, Chorus Deep Runner. Nope. I meant to click on Chorus Deep Runner. Hope everyone's still doing well, having a good day. Thank you for Drunken Master. You need me. According to the completed map, King Hundar's treasure lies not far from here. Incredible! Yep, King Hundar's treasure of ale. Dealer's Snowman is kind of a fun dungeon, though. Not one I'm going to do at the moment, but kind of a fun dungeon. Okay, um, I'm probably going to do a good bit to my team config once we get into certain territory proper. I don't know why I felt like I need to talk to the Shunlai chest again. I'm actually looking for the merchant who's up here. Here comes trouble. All right, let's uh, journey our way down. What is this? Primeval armor? Yeah. Ancient. Oh, I do have some class of the Brotherhood, so I can, in fact, change Jorah's armor when the time is appropriate. I so desire. For now, Vlox and Excavations. Oh. Okay, yeah, I need to try to remember to do that. So that would be good to have before I get too deep here. Sure, that works. Chill Blains, Bane of Elementalists everywhere, except for those really peculiar ones that are designed to not hate Chill Blains. It's very dark here. What made me miss? Did I have blurred vision on me? I might have had blurred vision on me. It's kind of weird, I'll admit, that Ogden is more prot than smite. Get out of here, albino rat. A skelks in here. Not a whole lot to say about what's going on, though. I'm mostly just pushing my buttons.
When does the boulder start rolling? Oh, here it comes. I party out of out of the way for it. Yes. I'm pretty sure deaths due to boulders don't count or like don't accumulate death penalty. It's interesting to me that like, cave ayahuasca and regular ayahuasca have extremely different skill bars. I don't know why that is. Just that it is. Where the heck did this thing come from? Well, Beacon of Drachner, I am sure I will kill just enough Skelks here to make you happy. What do you know? I did. Is this the... Yeah, okay, Vlox's Falls is just over there. And I need to remember, if I can manage it, to go and uh, get myself some lovely... Uh, hmm. Uh, dwarven bounty thingy, or dwarven title bonus. When we uh, when we get there, something I was just thinking about while looking at this. Normally, I wouldn't. I, I look at there's nothing to fear, and my brain is like, this is a dam damage decreasing skill, right? Thirty five percent less damage, and it lasts based upon leadership. But I was just reflecting on the fact it also is a party heal. Like, it heals my party for 60 HP when it ends. Uh, that's not nothing. Now, is it 15 energy worthy? Eh, maybe not. But um, this is, is vaguely, like, four second duration and then a party heal afterwards makes this actually kind of potentially, like, almost usable on a secondary. Or, like, to the point where I'm, like, considering, hmm, maybe I should actually try that out. Like, there's nothing to fear on a secondary Paragon more as a party heal than as damage mitigation. Feels kind of suspect, but uh, it doesn't feel like... It feels almost reasonable as a skill. Like, um, for four seconds, all party members take 35% less damage, and uh, when this shout ends, they're healed for 60. Like, that, that kind of almost sounds like a reasonable skill. Like, 15 energy might be a little high for that. That might be... But, like, at the same time, it affects the whole party. That almost... I kind of almost want to try that now. Because, like, if you time that right, you could catch some powerful stuff with it. Rather than just trying to be a persistent decreased, decreased damage skill. Like, uh... Incoming elementalist. Oh, we're going to mitigate the initial wave sort of thing. That that doesn't sound terrible. It's one of those things where sometimes skills, like additional text, can cause you to process things in a way where you'd process them differently without that text. I know I've talked about this before, but Symbolic Strike is, to me, a really good example, where because that skill has a maximum damage cap, it suddenly makes it feel like the purpose of the skill is to try to hit that damage cap, rather than, like, if you have two or three signets, that skill is just plus 24, plus 36 damage, both of which are perfectly reasonable at four adrenaline. So, like, it kind of... It makes it feel like it's about maximizing... Um stuff for uh, uh, where do I need to go I need to go Gunner's Hold it makes it feel like it's about trying to maximize the damage from it than uh, um, than like what it actually does um, hello 
Nibzao. Uh, they don't still add to this game. You play Guild Wars 2 and you think it would be interesting to play Guild Wars 1 and see the Char Human War, etc. But don't know if I have the energy to play, huh? Um, so they do some basic maintenance. They have added a f some stuff for the 15th anniversary um, last year in 2020, April 2020. They added um, a new set of elite skills, uh, which elites work very differently in this game than they do in Guild Wars 2. Uh, but they added Heroic Refrain, for example, um, here, which my leadership is kind of low, so it's not super great. Uh, Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2 play very, very differently. Um, so right now I'm playing with a bunch of AI companions that I can customize and kit out with their skills and equipment. Um, I think Guild Wars 1 is absolutely worth playing, but different people are going to have different tastes. So if you like a game that has a lot... Like, if you enjoy like a, a card game like um, Magic the Gathering or whatever, um, Guild Wars 1 was definitely heavily inspired by trading card games. Uh, if you, you can, I mean, there's of course the, the equivalent of net decking, um, of looking up builds if, if you aren't interested in that. Um, Guild Wars 1's combat style is, is very different. Uh, for a lot of people, the fact that there's no, like, jumping as a navigational technique in this game is a big deal breaker. There is this, but that's just an emote. Um... To me, that's not a big deal at all, but... Yeah, and that's going to be, again, like... For me, I prefer an instanced game. I don't like persistent open worlds. To me, persistent open worlds are actually kind of a detriment uh, just because of a lot of how the design works. So that's definitely a your mileage will vary depending upon what you're looking for from a game. Um, there's some people for which there's nothing like Guild Wars 1, and so they're just going to keep playing it because... There's literally, like, nothing else out there competing for the playstyle that Guild Wars 1 has. But for some people, that's just not the playstyle that they enjoy. So it's, it's not a game for them. And that's cool. I'm glad that there, that there are different games for different people. Um, but if you have a Guild Wars 1 account, it's still around. So you can always hop on and, and try it. Um, as long as you remember all of your login information. And if you connected it to your Guild Wars 2 account, then it's the same login info. Uh, you can... So most people are going to be playing either high-end content or in like doing stuff like speed clears, or they're going to be playing with AI companions, the heroes. Um, you can go find people. Uh, Discord, I'm going to type this, uh, discord.gg slash gw. That will take you to the Guild Wars Global Discord. You can find people to play with there sometimes, um, and you can also find active guilds that you can do stuff with. But you're generally not going to get pickup groups for doing random content unless it is specifically like the Zeishan content. So the Zeishan stuff is just uh, daily quests that give you bonus rewards for doing specific things. So, for example, uh, there's a mission called Jenner's Horde. And today there's a Zeishan mission for going in, uh, a Zeishan, Zeishan quest for going and doing Jenner's Horde. So you can find pickup groups for doing like Zeishan missions or potentially some Zeishan bounties sometimes, uh, which are just different different types of daily quests that people like to do. Um, but that's that's the main sort of stuff that you're going to be able to relatively easily find pickup groups for. Um, but you should be able to find, like, if you poke around enough, and I, I've, I personally have not looked into it too much because I'm kind of content where I'm playing, um, but I, I do know that there are people that, have lo that are looking for active guilds and are able to find them to do content more actively. So if being able to play with other people is really important to you, definitely check out that Discord. Um, try to figure out a guild that you can get hooked into that's active. Um, they, they're they definitely out there. Um, and that would be a way of being able to, to play with people. Most, like, you can do, like, most of the content in the game with just heroes. So it's, for most people, trying to coordinate with other people is just not necessary. But it can add a lot of fun. And I, like, I have a regular play group that we play together. Um, on Sundays, and that's something that I enjoy. So, yeah, like, some of the very elite content becomes a lot harder to do with heroes, uh, but people have done very incredible stuff in this game. Uh, and you can absolutely treat this like a single-player game. Um, yeah, so, like, you can do most of the con... Basically, the stuff that, like, you really want other players for, people are actively wanting to do more, so you can find people who are doing it more easily. 
Um, again, I look at the Discord and try to get co- connected and stuff if you're wanting to look at that like very end game stuff. But if you're looking to just like experience story and things like that, you absolutely do not need to partner with people for that. Uh, you can do it with heroes. Um, and it's probably unless people are specifically looking for the story, um, then like it's probably better to go with heroes because you can kind of go at your own pace because a lot of people who are actively playing the game have like been through everything so many times that they're not really looking to go slowly if that makes sense they're looking to kind of like skip cutscenes and stuff like that so um yeah i don't remember exactly 30 or 40 dollars i think oh yeah oh this this is um so if you want to see map size, this character doesn't have most of it uncovered. Uh, this is the Tyrian map. There are, th- I guess, technically four maps, but three sort of overworld maps. Um, there's the Battle Isles right here, which is primarily PvP, but people do test stuff out in Isle of the Nameless. Um, and the Zaish Menagerie over here is stuff for pets. Um, then there is uh, Easton, or there, there's Elona. So this this character has most of the map uncovered, which is why I hopped onto him. Uh, so Ilona has Easton over here, which is all of these areas. Um, Corna, that covers like all of this stuff over here, uh, and it goes up into Vobby over here, um, with some hidden maps you can't see in the Desolation over here. So there's a bunch of stuff over here. Uh, and then it also goes into the Realm of Torment. You can't see most of these maps because uh, they don't unfog. But there's several explorable maps and mission maps and stuff down in here in the Realm of Torment. Um, and then if we go over to Kynang Center. Over here is Kantha. Kantha has been getting a huge amount of focus lately because of End of Dragons. But you can see Kynang City, like, there's... Five or six maps here. One of the things you can't see is there's another map underneath uh, Shaquang Skyway over here called the Undercity, which is like the same sort of territory. Um, then Pong Mai Valley is kind of an area between the Jade Sea over here and the Echovald Forest, which is like all over in here. Uh, and then there's also Xingjie Island, which is a bunch of zones over here. Um... And then there, the Tyrian map has the most on it because the Eye of the North expansion also has maps on it. Plus, it was just the biggest to begin with. So you have all of Ascalon over here, which is just taking up a huge amount of space. Uh, you have the Northern Shiver Peaks going down all the way down to the Southern Shiver Peaks, which has a bunch of stuff going on. Uh, the Crystal Desert, nice big area here. Um... Yeah, this this is the map that Guild Wars 2 is based off of, is the Tyrian map. You got the Ring of Fire over here. You can't go to Ore in this game. It's just a giant pile of ocean, mostly. Um, but the Ring of Fire Island chain. Uh, this right here is part of the um, Eye of the North expansion. Uh, the Pale Tree would have been right over here, by the way. You can find the Pale Tree's, like, sprout right over here. Uh, and Rod- early Rodasum is over here. I think it technically shifts over this way some uh and then you have like all of the maguma jungle area over in here um and into krita over this way with over here this is more eye of the north map um and then you have more eye of the north stuff up here with the uh the the far north area with the uh the shiver peaks Continuing over this way, the Char Homelands have a couple of maps over here. And uh, there's a little bit here as well. Um, so there's a lot of territory on this map. And, like, the scale of this is very different feeling from Guild Wars 2. Like, if you go over to Camp Rancor over here, um, this guy has a bunch of consumables he needs to use up from the holiday. And we go into, like, Talus Shoot. Uh, yeah. There's no swimming or anything in this one. Um, but yeah, it is... It gets sunk 
uh, kind of at the start of things. So this is Talus Shoot. Like, this is, you know, the beginning of this area, and I don't want to be here too much on just a single character because uh, I'm not going to survive super well, but not with this bar anyway. But there's uh, a lot going on here. These are not small maps, so... Uh, there are Asura in some of the Eye of the North areas. You cannot play as Asura, of course. You can only play as humans in this game. But um, if I actually switch back to the other character... Doo -doo -doo -doo. This will take a moment. Um, you can see over here, after they load in, there's a couple of Asura here. Uh, and I also actually want to rearrange my party in a moment, but there is uh, Vec right here is an Asura hero that you can add to your party as well. Um, Zed's Shadow Hoof is a centaur. Um, and Jora, who's in my party right now, she's a Norn. Um, and Mox is a golem, actually. Is, uh, Mox is an Asura and made golem, made by Zin. Who you may have heard from, uh, heard about from the sequel. So there are a few. Uh, and Ogden, Ogden Stone Healer, is a dwarf, of course, who you would be familiar with from Guild Wars 2 as well. Of course, this is before he's turned to stone. <laughs> no, I think the graphics hold up pretty well, actually. And I, I agree with that sentiment. Um. Even look, it looks even better when in person because I have to. I'm at like 720p for the stream, so. Um. I think I want to leave and reconstitute this party. So let's grab Ogden. I kind of want to avoid Jora here just because I think this area is going to be a bit rough. Yeah, he. Um. He gets turned to stone by the right of the last dwarf. That has not happened on this character just yet, but that turns... He doesn't turn to stone in this guy, game, but he does eventually. Uh, Mirian. Talcora, Ogden. I do want Prius. I want to grab Vec and Gwen. And... Okay, I grabbed Ogden first. That's right. Okay. Who do I want in this last spot? I want to avoid too many physical attackers here. Because I think I'm going to head straight down to the Shards of Ore area. I have to pass through an area that just absolutely spams you with blind and stuff. So it's not a good spot for... Um, certain casters. I think I might bring Norgu. I think... Norgu, your illusion spec, right? No, your domination spec. Never mind. I want Daedalon. Do you have a weapon, Daedalon? Okay, you do at least have a weapon. So I'm doing a special sort of challenge thing called the Skill Booster League where I have uh, a limited set of skills I'm allowing myself to use uh, just because I th find the build craft fun, so I like the uh, little challenge. Um, so I'm going to be doing some stuff based on that here in a moment. Uh, I have panic on him. That's good. Need some more domination magic. Oh, you also have the dual class system. Okay, I don't yet have migraine, so I will want to pick that up. But I do have crippling anguish. I'm not actually wanting to do mesmer things here. I just wanted to check to see which skills I had. Um, I do have Shield of Deflection. Yeah, I was thinking of running RC here, so I think I might. There is... It's just a Flesh Wound, though, which is very similar to Restore Condition, but doesn't heal, and I think I want the healing. But maybe Song of Purification is better? The problem with Song of Purification is it does require you to build up Adrenaline to function. Okay, well, let's see. I want Ogden, and she's fine the way she is. Talcora's fine. Prius is fine. Vec. Uh, I don't really need random minions on you. Uh, 
I think I'm going to go slash Ritualist here. I want Pure Wizzly Ming. Uh, right now, I'm actually working on RPG Maker MV, the, the game I'm working on uh, in that one is. But I have used Unity Sum in the past, and I definitely am going to use it for future projects. The only reason why I'm using RPG Maker MV right now is because I want to actually make something in it. Uh, and so I'm, I'm being determined mode. Okay. What do I have in Air Magic? I actually don't need... Okay, I have Mind Shock. I don't need... Um, blind, because I think I'm going to try to get that off of Daedalon. So... Probably most of this is fine. I'm going to drop Ore of Restoration. So I want... Yeah, Pure Wizly Ming. Pure Wizly Ming is nice because it, it removes conditions from your party, and we're going to an area where there's going to be a lot of them. So uh, I would like another copy of Men, Body, and Soul, but I already am using one. Okay, I have two for the skill booster league that I'm doing. Gudo. Okay, yeah, I'm not familiar with G-Develop. Gotcha. That makes sense. Hope things are going well for you. I think it's good for people to spend some time uh, trying to learn how to make games, though. Okay, but no Spirit Light, because I only have the one copy, and I am using it there. Let's see. Is there something else that I'd rather run in that slot, then? I could bring Spirit Transfer. I think I'd be just as happy to bring another Elementalist spell, though. Ah, I see. That's a fun setup. Shock Arrow probably would be a good idea, then. Yeah, I think I'm just going to slot in Shock Arrow. I can find Shock Arrow. There it is. Okay, that's probably good. Uh, Gwen, I'm fine with. Datalon just has an empty bar, so we're going to change that. Hmm. I do want... Okay, I'll probably give Datalon a Resurrect. I'm not sure... Probably Restore Life. I know I have Restore Lives copies um mesmer is up yeah i have what two of those again i'm playing a special way where i have limited numbers of skills the number in the upper corner of the skill icon is how many copies of that skill i get to use so uh yeah i want ineptitude okay let's just Max out your illusion. Like 11 fast casting, 10 inspiration is where this is going to settle. Seems pretty good. Where's that restore life? There's that restore life I want. Um, okay. Wandering Eye? Yeah. Wandering Eye is really good. Um, the power return seems good. Synergize as well with Gwen using E Surge as well, because if they get energy back, then she can have more to burn off. Um, I want the okay, yeah, Arcane Conundrum is a good idea. Um, and I should have Drain Enchantments. Yep, right there. I'm kind of content with that. Matter of Persistence is also an option. I don't think it's stellar here. 
I don't really feel like clumsiness is a skill I want to use. Frustration's not bad. I don't I do have some copies of that. Frustration actually works really nicely with these interrupt skill the interrupt on attack skills, because it triggers them. Um Actually, I think I like Inspired Hex because there's a lot of hexes that are um, illusion magic that <laughs> that he'd be able to make good use of. Um, and then Signet of Clumsiness is actually a good idea. If I'm going to be doing stuff that uses Signets, then I might as well have that. I th think this kind of spreads stuff out on everybody okay. Yeah, that feels like it should be in a good spot. Okay, I'm going to... So I'm kind of torn between trying to, like, Restore Condition or Song of Purification. I think Restore Condition is more along the lines of what I want to be doing here, though. Um... Actually, this is a better question. Do I have... RC here. I have marker protection. No, I do not have RC. Restore condition is really nice because it cures all conditions at once. So, you know. Okay. I'm also looking for... Um, it's just a flesh wound. It's just a flesh wound. Uh, makes an... Uh, target other ally loses all conditions and they get sped up. Uh, restore condition removes all conditions and then heals them. So, thank you for the follow, Adaro. I appreciate that. Um, so, part of what I was thinking is I could totally see switching Ogden from Signet of Judgment, which is just kind of here, to restore condition, but I, I don't have either that or the other one in my skill booster league here so that's uh off the table unfortunately so i kind of like having lyric of zeal around part of me would like to use Song of Purification. I think I'm going to focus a little little bit less heavily on Spear. Because um, what I kind of want to do here, actually, is I kind of like the idea of going Tactics. So I can bring... Um, to the Limit. There is a Paragon version of that, though. What is... Is it Make Your Time? Ah, but it's absolutely terrible. Compared to To the Limit, anyway. To the Limit is less energy and quicker recharge, so um, that makes it better. If I went with that, um, that would allow me to power up Spear of Redemption and the other one. Because um, Song of Purification removes, as you can see, uh, for 20 seconds, the next... Several skills used by each ally with near shot removes a condition from that ally. There's going to be a lot of conditions in here, so that's kind of why I'm looking at that. Um, being able to power up Spear of Redemption, which makes me lose a condition if I fail to hit, is also kind of appealing. I could alter alternatively go slash Ritualist. The advantage of this is it's somewhat dependent upon what other skills I have, though. Um... Okay, I'm not seeing spawning power. I could go grab um, Sight Beyond Sight. Sight Beyond Sight allows you to be immune to blind for a period of time. Uh, and that would be a way that I could get attacks off as well. I could also run a copy of Men, Body, and Soul on myself. I feel like this is a situation, though, where it just makes the most sense to just kind of go with it's just a flesh wound so I can cleanse individual party members and then probably go slash ranger for antidote signet. 
I think I'm going to just do this. This seems like the most straightforward option. Yeah, I'm just going to roll with it this way. There's a lot of different choices that I can make is kind of the point. I do think I like the idea of running slightly more leadership, though, to help with the energy. A little awkward. This is currently the 11. I could drop that down and go one more in leadership. Is that worth doing? Yeah, that's probably fine. I'll go with that. Okay, I need to grab quests from people here. Why are you bothering me? Hang on, let me think. Blorf will eventually have a quest for us. I'm not sure what triggers it off the top of my head, though. Okay, well, right now my plan is to go through the Shards of Ore to get to Gad's encampment, which is why I'm so concerned about conditions. There's The enemies there spam conditions on you. I'm busy. So it's kind of uh, annoying. I'm going to move this over here. It's just much easier for me to keep track of what's going on with party members if I can see their the thing a little bit better. Granted, I only have the one skill that cares, but that skill cares a lot. An advantage of this over uh, Restore Condition is that this is a shout, so it activates instantly and can be done in the middle of other actions. Also, I do have a couple copies of Mend Ailment, which are some nice healing as well. Um, conditions. They'll heal you for each additional condition you have on you, which is great. They really changed the crate when it comes to Guild Wars 2. The crate in here, they have the Neos version that can then become other enemies, uh, other advanced crate types. Is this surrogate that we take here? Probably. Yeah, I think it has to be. Where'd you come from? Okay, well, uh, I guess we're just going to fight some chromatic drakes now and get absolutely dumpstered by them. That's just how it's gonna be. We are, we 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 ended up doing fine. But. I see you over there, Kratnios. If it uses Metamorphosis, there's not a whole lot I can do. It's just going to turn into a new enemy. That's part of it. Crate Neos and Crate Necros look really similar to each other in names. I think I get them confused sometimes. If I had to guess, that is a thing that happens. And then I attacked with clumsiness, which I shouldn't do.
Is this highly salvageable? It's got a bad nothing to fear mod. Nothing to fear caps out at negative three damage while hexed. That one was two. Therefore, it was inferior to possible max values. Yeah, okay, that's what I was thinking. Um, there's nothing to fear, or it's just a flesh wound. Uh, it's got some weird quirks to it, but it um, affects an ally, so I can get two energy off of it, and if I've used Energizing, really one enemy, if I've used Energizing Chorus, then Energizing Chorus will reduce its cost to zero. Uh, so it's just free to energy uh, if I've done that. So it's kind of, it can be worth using sometimes, even when there's no conditions to remove. Okay, let's see how badly this goes. The answer is it might go very badly. We'll find out together. But I think it should probably be okay. These skeleton wizards are no joke. Uh, You might be able to tell, but I am using a lot of their, uh, it's just a flesh wound. Fun fact, if it also removes a condition, it somehow double triggers the energy gain from leadership, so you actually get more energy. You get four energy rather than the standard amount. What did I get here? Defensive. Okay, this is not great. That's a communing staff. That's interesting. Get out of here, Skelton Archer. It's really tricky because I can remove conditions while doing all of my other stuff, so. There's a certain amount of like paying attention to what's going on that I need to do. That's kind of like more than I would be if I was using restore condition. Like being able to use your condition cleanse in the middle of other actions is just kind of weird. Uh, it's not a thing that you ordinarily can do, so like I have to pay special attention to Figure out when that's happening. Those guys went down really quickly, but I'm not surprised. Uh, Datalon here is going to do a lot of damage to them, in particular, because they're going to attack and then take damage from his Punisher stuff. Actually, these wizards that need to go down. Okay, we're doing really well against these groups, which I'm really pleased by. I'm really pleased that we're doing well against these groups. Scourge sacrifice is kind of a big deal. Yeah, Mirian died because Scourge sacrifice made her elite blood is power. Uh, it cost sixty six percent of her maximum health instead of uh, a more reasonable thirty three percent. This dungeon is absolutely brutal if you're on that particular plan. I remember actually when I did this dungeon recently, I did bring a Divert Hexes uh, character to help deal with that. Get 
Seriously, Ming just went off. I can tell because everybody suddenly lost all of their conditions. One other really nice thing about uh, it's just a flush wound is that it's by speeding up the ally that you just cleansed the condition from, they can get out of the way of physical attackers that might be walloping them. Okay, we do need to go up and around here. These are poison jets I don't want to stand in because they'll deal a lot of damage to us. Ergo, they're bad to stand in. Uh, I'm running around a lot because they keep casting Eruption on me, and I would rather not have Eruption be under me because it deals a bunch of damage and keeps blinding me. It was bad, in other words. Still need to go around to get to Gaz Encampment, but we're almost there. How do we have a 7% morale boost? Usually it comes in even increments. I don't know. Maybe it was from killing 25 enemies, or multiple thereof. Hooray, God's Encampment. All right, I'm slide this over. Do I want to start the process of getting Hata. Probably. What news? I'm afraid I'm busy. I believe Frog Stomp cancels out the one boss spawn I want, but that's okay. I can pass through that area and get it later. I don't need anything this is offering me, so I'm going to sell that. Steel ingot, nice. I expect Cephas axes to salvage to something I don't care about. Uh, so, aka wood. I have so much wood. I've got stacks of it. And no need for that much wood. It doesn't sell for increased values to the merchant or anything, so I don't think it's worth extracting. Um, now that we're out of that area, do I want to do anything different on anyone? I think I'll leave Vec as he is. I feel like the Pier was Leeming is just nice utility to have around. I don't think I need to be as aggressively anti-conditioned, though. It actually might be a good idea for me to be a little bit more anti-hex coming into this area now that I think about it. Yeah, I think I am going to, in fact, uh, adhere to that consideration. 
by bringing Hexbreaker Aria. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else that I really need here. I like Lyric of Zeal. I kind of... I don't know. What do I want to run here? In my last slot, a.k.a. my elite slot. As I don't need Disjust of Fleshwind at this point. I could bring Defensive Anthem, but... Hits with an attack skill. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and bring Defensive Anthem. I don't think it's a, an exciting skill, but it is fine. Uh, yeah, it's fine. And um, most of my party does not have attack skills, so... It will work fine for them. I do want to capture Migraine uh, out here, but it won't spawn with the Hayday quest that I currently have active, so... That will Here comes trouble. be a thing I do later. This is the plan. I'd rather not fight all of those dinosaurs. I'll probably finish the Asuran branch today. And then wrap up at that point. What now? What now is that we're going to go fight some frogs together, you and I. That's what's now. I feel like Defensive Anthem is in leadership, so it can't be chained on non-Paragons very effectively. This is where the Migraine boss spawns, but during this quest, it's replaced by quest mobs, so that's why we don't have it. These Soldier Stance guys are kind of annoying, but thankfully we have a bunch of casters, so that gets around that problem. I was expecting a little bit more migraine spam than we've been having. Oh, interesting. I mean, he can use Spirit Shackles decently well, too. Spirit Shackles is really good against assassins, incidentally. And apropos of nothing in particular. I really like the chant animation with the golden wings doing a flap. It's really cool. I also really like this swamp. Like, visually. The purple mist and all that. It gives it a very moody atmosphere. Yeah, there's a migraine. Let's cast Hexbreaker Rhea for a couple seconds. So all my spellcasters can get rid of the hexes that I didn't put on them. You know, I could have also alternatively brought... Yeah, that would probably have been a good idea. Expel hexes, I could have brought that as an elite. Uh, which would probably have been a little bit better. I don't know why I didn't think about it. I was thinking of Divert Hexes, and I'm like, I don't want to invest in Protection Pairs for Divert Hexes, but... 
Why is everybody super on fire? I don't know how that happens. Probably a Paragon used Blazing Finale. I think they do that. like trudging through a swamp. What is your ruining price? Superior restoration magic. That's what I thought. You have a minor channeling somehow. That's cool. I like that Sager's ashes are over here. It's like, there's so many good little bits of attention to detail in this that I like. Yeah, because like right now, Expel Hexing Gwen would be really way better than this Uria is. I mean, the Uria is not bad, but... I don't feel like a Defense Phantom is doing that much to help. So what, 50% block chance? Oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna just drop Sage's Ashes now to give everybody 200 health. Yay. You know, I think these spiders have a unique monster hex that can't be Inspired Hex, so that makes Inspired Hex particularly good at dealing with that nonsense. your life weaver <laughs> uh, she gets a little sarcastic here I think I'm just gonna go back to Gad's encampment I'm afraid I'm busy this is a bit of a silly quest. Okay, let's go Mesmer. I actually am going to do something kind of wonky. I'm going to get rid of my Master entirely. I want to go probably soup leadership. Um, so what I'm going to do here is actually I have somewhere, yeah, I'm going to swap to my illusion magic set because I'm going to run illusion magic. Um, I probably leave Hexbreaker on... Um, I'm going to... Oh, fragility seems good here. I liked fragility when I was doing stuff previously, so... I'm actually going to leave my elite slot open. Um, the reason for that is I want to capture migraine. So I'm going to... This is going to be a little bit of a wonky bar, but uh, I'm going to try it see, how it, see how it goes. Feels like it could be all right. Yeah, it feels like it could be all right. 
I don't feel like you're trying to heroic refrain. But I'm also, you'll notice, not bringing an elite skill with me. That's because I'm planning on going into the dungeon, like, right afterwards. And I don't want to have to worry about elite skill shenaniganry. Tantide? Yeah, ironing gets That's exactly what I wanted. Tantide was the, this might salvage into that, but I don't want it to. Option. Um, but I'm going to do the, I believe the boss should spawn now. So I want to capture migraine and then go do that. So I am still here. I know it's an absolutely staggering proposition that I haven't gone anywhere, but. Well, we've got a number of conditions going on, so fragility feels kind of good. But yeah, I'm going to be a one in here comes trouble. Scepter Paragon here. So that's fun. One of the benefits of doing things this way um, as well, that's like not as immediately obvious. I mean, coming over this path first is when I get to Rod, assume I'll be able to grab the thing like right away, uh, which will be nice because that means I won't forget about it as I would be likely to do otherwise. Uh, she does want us to kind of go more that way. I'm going to take kind of a detour that way, but. kind of a weird the thing is like Paragon is absolutely capable of building adrenaline by wanding things so that's kind of what I'm doing as I'm wanding stuff it's not like it's that much different damage wise than a spear that you're not doing much with so I find wand Paragon to be a perfectly serviceable option hopefully that boss did in fact spawn should be mine something or another Yeah, Skull Flare. That's, Skull Flare is similar to mine, something or another, right? Right? I think so. How long does this last? 13 seconds? That's 130 armor ignoring damage over 13 seconds. <laughs> the other thing too is I get BIP support now because I have a wand. That's funny. I don't strictly speaking need it, but it's nice, I suppose. There we go. Good old migraine. Two second cast time, that's not terrible. Fragility is probably more the bread and butter of this bar. Oh, leave migraine there.
sometimes I just mouse over stuff that doesn't have a freaking guild tag after it, and my brain's like, ooh, did a gold or did a green green unique weapon drop? I really wish they had chosen a different color for those than green, the same color as nameplates, but uh, they didn't, and now I have to be confused. I don't know why I thought I was accomplishing with that. Signet of Clumsiness would have been a good idea on this bar, though. Uh, a little bit redundant with what Daedalon's doing, but... Having a Signet to trigger uh, Lyric of Zeal would have been useful. Four. Okay, I'll get you on the way back. We're about to kill a whole host of white mantles, so easily get that one kill we need, and then some. There was only nine of them. We should have been able to win. I'm just imagining what the white mantle are thinking. I'm gonna want to super salvage that. Hey, yeah, you can see all these white mantle over here. Ada is a wee bit naive. Just a wee bit. There's Bogrids down there, I think. Ambassador Carnegie. Is it Dale Carnegie? And then Andrew Carnegie was the, like, wealthy guy. I mean, probably they both were, but you know what I mean. Tantide, I was hoping for a first square. Uh, what did I get in this? Sentries? Okay, that's not worth anything. I'm just waiting for the dialogue to play out. Ambassador Carnegie is welcoming us to this meeting. Yes, talks be between our peoples. Let me just start by saying... No, no, allow me to start by say, dating. We are all incredulous that you were so easily lured into our trap. Wait, trap? What does a trap have to do with peace? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. You and your ilk have been a thorn in the white mantle side for far too long. Killing you and a great hero will be glorious. Unbelievable. You all screwed up my chance at fame and respect. Who's going to tell stories about me now? Nobody. You're going to die, every last one of you. Uh, Hado wants to be famous. Oh, these monkeys are way more dangerous than the white mantle. The issue is that uh, the simians have much better bars. That's why they're more dangerous. Let's have you not use Spirit Light Weapon.
few more white mantle down that way. Wait, it looks like... Turns out block stuff is useful against uh, ritualist spirits, but... Ooh, a rampage bonus. We're going on a rampage, everyone. Suddenly I'm getting strong bad flashbacks. Yes, it did, Hata. Yes, it did. a lot more skills on this character which means skill points are going to be important uh yeah he needs a lot more experience <laughs> uh Saros furnace would be good to do for experience points i suppose is worth a shocking number of experience points and that's basically it maybe i'll get the thing for doing a mini black moa check it's not a mini black mode check it's just a mini it's just a black mode check it's a miniature but it's a black mode check because it's not actually mini it's that's proper size but they're mini sized it, it's a whole thing I need to get up on that ridge. I'm thinking I can do it from going over here. I should probably do a capture spree first. I also should look at what stuff I can get for free from hero skill points. I fo totally forgot to talk to that one Astera that I thought that I was planning on talking to on the way back. Although, in my defense, I think she was down I'm busy. there, and I went back this way. So, kind of didn't go where she is. And Gorodons are nasty. So is Mobrin, Lord of the Marsh. He hits really hard. Time to fight him. Well, we've cleared out his cronies pretty quickly. Okay, that wasn't too bad. He can sometimes absolutely wreck you, but uh, it turns out my party is actually stronger than I thought it was, and we kind of just trashed them. I think we have, like, between, like, some enfeebling blood and empathy and ineptitude and wandering eye some and clumsiness, signal of clumsiness, some really good anti melee stuff um, that allows us to kind of keep them in check pretty well. And our 
Apparently our damage output is pretty solid, and I don't think I am a huge part of that. I think, in fact, that I am a relatively small part of our damage output. Be careful. My bar is not particularly strong. It is okay supplemental stuff, but it's not particularly strong. Crippling Anguish is probably a little bit better than Migraine, but I wanted Migraine in my repertoire, so... Uh, I captured it when it became available. That's pretty much what just happened. Yeah, you don't need silver armor or shockwave or anything else. Aha. Woo, Price, my friend. You are looking weak. take out these Angorodons here too because I'm going to want to go through this direction later and if these guys aren't here then they won't cause me problems then it's my logic anyway Excuse me while I realize I was looking at the wrong quest and was just going in the completely wrong direction. these party members have resurrects anymore. Hello, Alila Kit. Welcome. Alila? I don't know. How do you pronounce your name? But welcome. Welcome. Good to see you. And welcome, Raider. Okay. Well, uh, I want to go back that direction. Because I need Livia and Gad, for one thing. Hey, young Gray. Good to see you. We all are doing well today. I uh, just got eaten by raptors. I was doing pretty well before that, but um, I don't recommend becoming raptor food. I have a very weird bar at the moment because uh, I just captured migraine. I feel like that's all of the explanation that's needed, but maybe I'm wrong. That's what happened. Yeah, we actually did a pretty good job of taking out these Angordons. It's just another group came up and whomped us. Uh, I am playing through Eye of the North on this uh, Paragon here. I know he looks an awful lot like a Mesmer, but uh, I can assure you he's a Paragon. And um, 
I'm doing a skill booster league. So skill booster leagues are using this program over here that I made. Uh, it is a specific mode in them. I get skills at from booster packs at regular intervals. It's inspired by trading card games like Magic the Gathering. Uh, and the idea of like, you start off with X boosters and then you do like you play a game or rounds or match or whatever each week. And then you get an additional booster to add to your pool and kind of advance your, your deck as you go. So it's based on that idea. Um, this one's a fairly mature run of it. That I did a series of booster leagues initially as kind of a way of simulating a new character uh, or like a new player experience where you don't have all the skills unlocked. Um, but there's the additional twist of if you see the number like here on this distracting shot, there's a four. That means I can have four copies of distracting shot across my entire team. Uh, sometimes this becomes fairly meaningless. For example, I think I have like six remove hexes. Uh, I'm also not applying the Booster League to my player character, I should add. Uh, it's simply because my player character uh, started off as a new character when I started the League. So it was as I would get skills, then my character could use skills. Because he doesn't you know, doesn't start with all the skills available. Um, so, but because I have all skills unlocked on my account, I like to do various challenges to make building more, making builds interesting. Uh, and Skill Booster Leagues are one of the ones that I've done for that. So, um, and the way that I get packs in the way that I've been running it is when I enter a new world region, I've done it for the campaigns for Eye of the North. It's when I turn into Monumental Tapestry and I'll just get 25 Eye of the North skills chosen at random. Uh, and they can be duplicates with previous ones, but not within themselves, if that makes any sense. Uh, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer. Um, you can also check out the, uh, the exclamation mark tool will include a link to a YouTube video I made detailing what other things this program can do. Uh, so that's something that you can check out as well if you are interested in more. Uh, and it also has a download link uh, for anybody who enjoys making builds in this game, but finds you you uh, you find yourself going on kind of autopilot or whatever. And if anybody wants to like modify code to add additional stuff, I mean, it's on a GitHub. You can download the code. So it's written in C sharp. I heard gold coins drop. There they are. Thank you, and um, I'm always happy to answer questions about it. Uh, I do have a Discord. That's probably the best place to go and ask questions uh, when I'm not streaming. Uh, for anybody who is interested. I kind of don't want to fight those raptors at the same time. We'll see what they do. Okay, they are going to run over here. I'm going to kind of wait for the raptors and intercept them. So that way I'm not fighting at the same time as this Etten. I hit the wrong button. I should really stop hitting the wrong buttons. Well, looks like the Etten wanted to get involved anyway. So here we are. And you can set up this any skill booster league you might run however you want to do it. So you just design a set. Um, sets all contain the same set of rarities. That's something I probably should have broken out to be individual per set, but I didn't. Because um, I wasn't thinking about that at the time. And uh, you can define basically what's... Like, all skills share the same... or Like, any given skill is the same rarity within a set. So, like... Um, if it's a common, it's going to be common in whatever set you put it in. But you can choose which skills go into any given set. Uh, yeah. And there's a lot of other stuff there. You can do codexes as well. I like skill booster leagues a little bit better than codexes. But uh, they both have... They're good points. 
Um, and then there's a whole slew of other types of challenges and stuff. So, is and then there's template drafting, which is a lot of fun. It's based on Wooden Potatoes Monster Draft that he demoed extremely briefly in a faction story recap. Uh, but I like the idea, so I I made a template draft based on the rules for that. But you just give it a bunch of templates and then you draft them. That one's pretty fun. It's not quite the same sort of challenge, but it is a not dissimilar challenge, and I like it. Okay. Gad, do your thing so we can go do this dungeon, story dungeon business. All of the three branches contain at least one dungeon thing, but the Asurin one contains two. Uh, Gad, am I missing something? Okay, apparently I just need to get you a little closer to trigger. Oh great, another booker. So a Serbic. Yeah. I don't feel a particular need to watch all of those cutscenes. I have done story-focused playthroughs of the uh, most of Guild Wars content. You can find pins. You can find it on my YouTube channel, but you can find the uh, play uh, where there's a playlist. It's just the Guild Wars like slow playthrough. More playthrough. I kind of changed the name it partway through, but you can find all of that on there if you want a lot to watch. Where I kind of more meticulously go through lore and things. And uh, discover a lot of stuff I hadn't noticed before. A lot of subtleties in particular with the Prophecy's story. That I just missed when I first played it, because I first played through that game when I was like 17, probably. Uh, it turns out you just don't notice as much stuff <laughs> when you're that age. Do I want to go this way? Yeah. Sure, this will work. Spiders. Give me this leg. Gad, I know where I'm going. I'm going this way. But we're going to come back up this way, so. Uh, I hate these things. Get back down here. There's a skeletal sentry in the... The skeletal sentry. I meant the inscribed hound in this. The inscribed sentry and the skeletal hound. If I can get the order of those things correct. Oh my goodness, that was ridiculous. Also, I can smell supper and it is making me hungry. I was planning on ending around 7. I was thinking I could get through the whole Cern branch in that time, but we'll see if that's possible or not. There's a lot of stuff to do. But kind of not. I don't know. I need to do Ula's Lab, the stuff with Rank, and then the Golem thing. 
so. I had to remember that I didn't need to go try to hunt down the, um... Beacon of Drachner. Because I was uh, beginning to look for it. Okay, I need to do some auto attacking so I can build up to my hex removal skill. Would be a good idea anyway. Turns out 8 Adrenaline is a lot. But it's also like, Hexbreaker is one of the few like, multi-party member hex removal skills. Like, there's a lot... Or like, there's a couple of hex removal skills that go deep. Um, expel hexes, divert hexes, convert hexes. All go deep on somebody. But in terms of going wide, of hitting multiple party members, it's withdraw hexes, which is a absolute garbo elite as far as I can tell uh, and x Rhea Hex Eater Signet kinda goes wide um, I think that's about it I can think of it's a lot easier to get rid of enchantments than it is hexes is all I'm saying At least it feels that way. But AoE cleansing is very strong, so uh, there's good reasons to kind of limit it at some. I still think withdraw hexes should have been designed differently uh, to improve with the number of hexes that you remove instead of get worse. But I thought that might happen. Those things like to run away, so. Like, Brave Sir Robin. I have not watched that movie in quite some time. It's like, on there's a bookshelf. or like Bookshelf is a bit strong. I don't know. There's, I mean, I'm using it for books, though. So. There's a shelving unit behind me that's kind of like a table high or whatever that uh, has it in it. Monty Python and the Search for the Holy Grail. I think I like Airplane better in terms of, like, comedies, but I don't know. I haven't watched Mon Holy Grail in a while. Are there any more modern comedies that I really like? How often do they even make... Now I'm trying to think of, like, how much do they make... Like, what sort of comedy films are even getting made these days? Most of the movies I feel like I'm watching are... Um, like... I don't know. The big company ones, mostly, I guess, really, when you get down to it. Or which I mean, like, Disney.
Yeah, I feel like lighthearted dramas are more common than straight up comedies. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how Matrix 4 turns out, though. I'm, I am interested in seeing that movie. Now I'm thinking about movies, you see. Um, the original Matrix is, like, one of my favorite movies. I, I like that one. Um, Groundhog Day is really high up there. I really like Groundhog Day. But Matrix 2 and 3, Reloaded and Revolution? Revolution? Revelation? Something like that. Uh, I was not as fond of. Part of what I don't like about Reloaded is there's the that like rave scene that feels like it ab does absolutely nothing to advance the plot and takes up like a huge chunk of time partway through the movie. I like the third one better. But there's like a really important scene in the middle of that like rave scene for advancing narrative things. So it's kind of important to not miss that. But it just like they they ran into the Superman problem where they made Neo too powerful at the end of the Matrix, so it raises the question of where do you go from here? How do you make challenges for this character? Uh, and they didn't really have a good answer to that question. I'm so used to the dungeon version of this, because I've done this several times lately that I kind of forgot, like how much less intense this version was. But it is in fact way less intense. Did that unlock Livia? I think so. Yeah, Livia's unlocked, and I'm going to unlock Hades now as well. Um, okay, so given that, I need to add stuff for both of them. It's going to ding at me when I go down, but that's okay. Uh, there's Hada, so let's add a booster for Hada. Uh, ooh, Angelic Bond. Oh, there's It's Just a Flash Wound. I wanted that earlier. Well, you can't see these because it's popping up in a separate window that's not captured, but we'll scroll down to it in a moment. Uh, and let's go ahead and add a booster for Livia as well. Spiteful Spirit. I do like myself Spiteful Spirit. Okay, let's go see what are the new things. Yeah, <laughs> we already have Spiteful Spirit. Um, bunch of Paragon stuff. Spear of Redemption, Remedy Signet. Anthem of Weariness is nice to you have available. Area of Zeal. It's just a Flesh Wound was something I was going to use earlier. Blazing Spear is good too. Um, Hexer's Vigor is not super exciting. Mark of Subversion is... I was getting this confused with Soul Barbs the other day. They have very similar icons. I don't know what I'm going to necessarily do with those two heroes. I've just added them. So. 3,000 Asurin Reputation Points. Well, that's pretty good. Okay, uh, at this point, I definitely do not want this particular bar going forward. Its energy was not great. Um, one thing. Yeah, it gives you the little ID first icon. Skull Spears can salvage into bone. That gave me a good amount, too, didn't it? 13 bones from the Skull Spear. Yeah, that's pretty good. Twelve from that one. Apparently, if you need bones, that's the place to go get it. And centuries is not going to be worth anything. Can't imagine how it would be worth anything. Oh, that ID kit expired. I should go to the Bone Palace to pick up another one because I have these ancient artifacts. Do I have? I feel like I remember sticking another one in here somewhere. Yeah, there's an ancient artifact. Uh, but I also kind of don't want to go 
the Bone Palace to pick up another one. So, I'm just going to stick the Ancient Artifacts over here and make them another character's problem. Or, you know what I mean. My cousin was telling me that Bone has gotten some good value to it. I will need to v probably verify that. I don't want to do any of that on stream right now, though. What I do want to do is I want to pick up a new ID kit. I'm afraid I'm busy. I do identify everything because it goes up in value. Especially if it has shown me the money in it. But even without that... Uh, it will go up in value from being identified. Like, um, the Solemn Spear is currently 51. It went up to 74, but this Composite Bow is 55. And it went up a little bit to 57. So they're often better than that, but you do get them that are kind of that weak. So, it all varies. Um... Right then, I want to go back to Vlox's Falls and over to Ratasum. That's kind of the course of action right now. Do I want to just... Nah, I don't really feel like running this road bar. Okay. Um, I was trying to decide whether or not I wanted to run kind of an incoming fallback bar, and I decided I didn't want to. I need more Domination Elites. Well, that's neither here nor there. Air disenchantments are really good. Anti-enchantment skill. In my opinion. You know what? Let's do that. I was talking about doing a... Uh, I'm going to drop that. Probably gonna switch back to the spear mastery. I'm just gonna drop all this stuff and probably swap to my command shoes. So I want like 10 wind prayers, 12, not 11, so I can have some decent leadership. Oh. Pretty weak go for the eyes, but you know what? That's what we're here for. We're here for a weak go for the eyes. You have more adrenaline options, actually, in that, but... Let's keep Bre Hexbreaker Rhea around, actually, because it's got some nice costs to it. By which I mean it's adrenaline. <laughs> Holy Spear, Spear of Redemption. Uh, Harrier's Grasp is an interesting skill that I could potentially use at some point, but I don't want to on this particular bar. Yeah, um, I'll bring Mystic Healing. Mystic Healing is nice to have available. I kind of want another Adrenaline skill. Maybe Anthem of Weariness is okay, but... Command does not have a whole lot of adrenaline skills, is the issue. Has go for the eyes, and that's like it? I really wish there had been an adrenaline shout that did something useful in leadership. There isn't, but I wish there had been. I don't really want to try to use There's Nothing to Fear. I just, it feels uh, too expensive for what this bar is. Oh, you know what would be really good here is dodge this. Dodge this would be fantastic. Because it, it would give me some adrenaline for using it. Okay, thank you. And thanks for dropping by in the raid, Alila Cat. Kit. I keep wanting to make your name Cat. Sorry. Alila Kit. Doing my best. Um... Yeah, hmm. 
I guess I'll just bring kind of a mediocre Anthem of Envy. I think dodge this is done, is gotten by doing this, isn't it? Yeah, I'll be doing the bison fight later. Right now I need to do this, so. This is my zealous. Yeah, I want the zealous one. I'm gonna go ahead and swap those into position. Okay. Uh, Vlox's falls. I'm content with this party for now. Um, actually, this is a good question. Do I have? If I have incoming fallback, I may want to swap somebody over to doing that. But if I don't have both, I do not have. I have, like, neither. Cool. Okay. Well, that's not a thing I'm doing with them, then. Uh, it would be... I could run it myself, but I don't want to run incoming fallback. I want to just make my way where I'm going. Yeah, I know. I need to talk to Lex. We'll do that when we get to... Another Rata Soom. I kind of figured I'd end up in that Sort of position. I have a bunch of Norn quests and stuff to do, so that'll kind of bump me up the rest of the way. I was gonna say, we have some removal here, I know that. It's so one of those things where Go for the Eyes is gonna actually produce quite a bit. I think we got like. Double or triple aggroed here. Wow. Okay, well, we ended up in a much worse spot than I was expecting. Don't know how we ended up getting absolutely wrecked by those guys. When I've been doing fine. I, apparently, my there's nothing to fear and stuff was contributing a lot more to our group durability than I was realizing. I mean, granted, taking a little over third less damage will matter it when that's happening regularly enough. But I was not expecting such a pronounced effect. I'm moving over a bit because I want to separate myself a little bit from the rest of my party. Um, the reason why I want to do that is because if they're casting Blinding Surge on me, I want to uh, reduce how effective that is. I think part of what happened here is there was a lot of these... Um, Arcanos spamming air magic on us, and I just was not taking them properly into account. And we were getting wrecked by that. I think is what happened there. I don't like all this blind spam I'm dealing with. Okay, I actually kind of waited a little bit there to, um... Wow, we just got chill blazed. 
uh, to use um, Onslaught because I had Hexbreaker up and I wasn't sure if they were going to Hex me. Lockpick, that's nice. I've been getting a lot of lockpick drops lately. Onslaught, definitely not as good on a Paragon as it is on a melee attacker who gets way more benefit out of the move speed buff. a bunch of healing went flying about everywhere. Life is actually quite useful for party heals. I feel like I should be able to finish the Asuran branch in like half an hour or so. But it depends upon how long some of this stuff takes. Streams have to end sometime, you know. Oh my goodness, so many pop-up groups. Oh my goodness, so much chill blains. Hmm, I don't oh, like I seeing Mirian at uh, low health like that. There's this... No, it's just a bunch of Incubi over there, of course, because that's what we needed, more Incubi. Nope, there is a Spirit Caller. Spirit Callers are ritualists that can resurrect, so I need to take this guy down. of this area as being yeah, I think it's a little bit more direct to go that way. I think of this area as being the spot where you defend from destroyers, but obviously they're not here just yet because that's a later thing. Nope. I'm just, just nope. I'm done. I'm done dealing with pop-up groups. I'll get my I'm busy. 20 rep points or whatever from this, and then I'll just... Yeah, if the monsters want to chase me, the monsters can chase me. I am going to Riven Earth. Need me? 
Yeah, I know. Talk to Lex. I've been hearing that all... Ever since I left Lox's Falls after doing uh, the Gad stuff, technically. This actually isn't bad. It affects the um, Anthem of Envy affects the uh, Ritualist spirits, so it will boost their damage a bit, which is nice. Uh, Rank is thankfully along the way. He's contemplating this waterfall because I've been playing long enough. I thought they fixed this bug, but apparently they haven't. Uh, this is a bug where the um, animated graphics just kind of stop being animated uh, if you've been playing long enough. I think it usually takes around like five or six hours. I've been streaming for almost six hours, so... And I've had the game open longer. I don't have a good way of checking that, though. Except for when the blue messages pop up that tell me how long I've been playing. I can check how long I've been in the map, but that doesn't tell us much. Hold this character. Uh, I've been in this map for one minute. Obviously not the problem. I've played this character for 103 hours. 7,522 hours and 8 minutes over the past 193 months for my entire account. Uh, I've played this character, who is a less played character of mine, longer than I've played most other video games for. So that's fun. And there's some, some games that I play more. I think this is probably my most played video game. Uh, the Pokemon franchise might be kind of up there. Like, is one of the closer ones to, like, compete. But that's, like, across all the generations that I played it, which is from one to whatever Sun and Moon is. I haven't played uh, Sword and Shield, and I'm not particularly, like, I'm very ambivalent <laughs> about it. I watched a Let's Play of it, and that was good enough for me. I like a lot of the mechanics of Pokemon, but... Uh, you need me? Apparently not. Uh, at this point, I'm kind of of the opinion that... Um, they're not tuned to sort of the way I'd want to play them. But I have friends who are still very into them. I We... Uh, I had a competitive Pokemon League in college that I really enjoyed. That was back in Gen 4 days when we had Pokemon Battle Revolution, and it could be a nice, big, like, spectator sport. And that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that tremendously, but... The normal playthrough experience just isn't as good as that in terms of the things that I enjoy, so... If Nintendo really wanted to grab my attention with a Pokemon game, what they'd have to do... Like, Arceus has my attention, or Arceus, or however the... Uh, you're supposed to pronounce that name. But, uh... So that's got my attention. The, um... The big thing that I'm looking for that would, like, really catch my attention in a Pokemon game these days is if they advertised it as, like you can choose what your starter is rather than having their set selection. So, like, if you could be, like, start from an egg, or just even a wider selection of possible starters, um, that would have me way more interested. I understand that's a very different experience, but if I want to freaking start the game with a Routes or a Larvitar... Or Munchlax. I want to be able to. Um, but the other thing is just like... I don't mind stuff going up fairly high in level. But I get a little tired of... Um, what is the, the best way to phrase this? I get a little tired of like... How easy it is to out level things... Um, which to me results in 
a experience where I, I like you can just brute force everything and strategy is no longer important. Um, which like you want some amount of like oh yeah you just are stronger than this enemy and you can just wallop it and wild Pokemon do that but I kind of want trainers to be a little bit more challenging than I feel like they are. That's kind of kind of where that lands for me I guess. Um, now we're gonna fight some more raptors here and it's inevitable. Not thrilled about it, but it's just how it's gonna go. So I don't know. It's just one of those things where um, I don't find myself super interested in Pokemon games at this point because, like, the team building customization aspect just feels weak, or at least in my mind. So basically I want a Pokemon game designed for like the hardcore fans who have been playing for a long time and want a really difficult challenge or and want more of a challenge. And I don't know if they have challenge modes in any of the more recent ones, but something like that would be nice. I don't know. I'm rambling at this point. All right. Where's Lex? There's Lex. I need to talk to Lex so everybody will, sh will stop talking to me about how I need to talk to Lex. Hi, Lex. Why are you bothering me? Thank you. Uh, Hoff has a polymock quest chain that I will do at some point. I'm busy. Uh... I should take a moment to clear this stuff out. Frankly, I want to salvage most of this stuff. Still hoping I'm going to get a first square from that. Hey, I got a leather square? Question mark? I was expecting a first square, but uh, apparently not. All right. That's, that's fine. Unexpected, but fine. I... I believe I have quite a bit of leather. I have a lot of Elonian leather squares as well. I need to remember that. I think I think I was making something the other day and I made a bunch of Elonian leather squares, forgetting that I had made a bunch of Elonian leather squares. Um So you know that's a thing. Elonian leather squares worth anything. Here comes trouble. Uh, that's a decent bit of value, I guess. Leather squares have a little bit of value. What's Ecto at these days? 11. Oh, that's come down a little bit. Maybe I should buy some Ecto. Probably not. Monster's Claws are at 7? My goodness, what's going on? Yeah, Onyx is cheaper than... Eight hundred fifty for Damask. I don't feel like Damask is used for a whole lot, so that doesn't surprise me. Are Spiritwood planks even on here? Yeah, they're just a hundred a piece, though. I mean, that's still a decent amount when you need fifty of them for a thing. But Why are you bones are at good value. I should sell some bones. I have a bunch of extra bones. We're going to uh, spend a moment just selling some common crafting materials. Hope everyone's doing all right. I know this is not the most exciting part of the game, but frankly, I want to do it right now because I don't know. I like the system of traders in this game and the way that things can fluctuate in value, though. I find that really interesting. That's something that I kind of would like to, at some point in future games that I make, build into them somehow. I'm not quite sure what that would look like uh, in practical terms, but I like the idea of kind of modeling different sort of supply-demand things that can suddenly make some stuff really valuable. And I don't know. It just seems interesting to me.
My understanding is that the uh, click rate here was done to prevent gaming the market by buying vast quantities and selling vast quantities. It gives time for the system to kind of update prices as things go. Isn't there a friggin... Oh, you know what? Oh, club won't talk to me. I'm not, I'm not cool enough. Where the heck is a friggin' merchant? Over here, I guess. Corpening? You nip rock? Reminds me of Jake King, the dwarf. Except his name is Jake King backwards. Um, right. I'm a little underwhelmed by this onslaught bar. I kind of feel like doing something else. Do I feel that enough to figure out what different I would want to run? I just run Soldier's Fury. Yes. I don't want Hexbreaker Aria. I like Mystic Healing just fine. I do have room for another PvE only skill. Mystic Healing is a little underwhelming just because of uh, Number of allies being affected. Dodge this again would be like really kind of ideal. You know, what? I'm gonna bring Burning Shield. No, I'm not. Maybe I am. I don't feel like it. Kind of do. Do I have ref the Burning Refrain? How do I not have that seal? I have no idea. Okay. Well, hmm. Hello, Drunk Johnny. Is it possible to finish everything in this game with just heroes? Um, Yes, with some giant asterisks. There are some of the elite stuff that's going to be pretty challenging to try to do with just heroes. Um, doable, I believe the answer is, like, technically, but definitely really challenging. Um, so... My understanding is that, yes, you can do everything with heroes. Um, definitely most of the ordinary, like, stuff of, like, playing through the story and everything you can do with just heroes. Some of the elite content uh, is going to be really hard with just heroes. Um, Domain of Anguish, Underworld, Fisher of Woe as well. Fisher of Woe I don't think is, is quite as hard as Domain of Anguish or Under Underworld, but... Uh, and definitely doing some of those in hard mode is also going to be quite challenging. Um, I myself have done, like, all of the vanquishes with heroes and stuff like that. Uh, all the missions and things. Um, so a lot of it is uh, what sort of builds are you using and everything. Um, so some of the elite content will be difficult to do with heroes. Um, but doable uh, if you really dedicate yourself uh, to some of that. Um, but there's active players if you want to do like the the high end game content who who do that stuff that you can find to join you. So, um, yeah, I feel like if I kept speaking, I'd just start repeating myself. So, the vast majority of the game is is doable with heroes, basically, and some of it. Technically, I think people have done most things. Or have done everything with heroes, but <laughs> some of it is uh, very challenging. So, very high end play. Or slow and things like that. Uh, I guess I'll just roll with this. I wasn't really too thrilled with Hexbreaker, so I like the idea of being able to put everybody out on fire when we're in that one section where everybody keeps getting set on fire. Why are you bothering me? Gotcha. Yeah, uh, you'll be hit by some nostalgia, I'm sure. It's usually people's response when they do that is like, whoa, the nostalgia. 
Okay, I am gonna have to deal with some wind riders. They will. Why are you Hopefully, we don't get too badly wrecked by them. They can be quite dangerous here. I need to go down a layer. Give a moment for Mirian to kind of equal out. She can technically kind of heal herself with Signif's energy. Technically. It's a little wonky. I don't know what well that is. It might actually be a well of blood, now that I think about it. I think... I think the crate Necros use well of... Or well of power, rather. Stretch my neck a little bit. Um... Okay, that one's metamorphosizing. These guys are a particular note. So I think they caused me a lot of trouble in the previous map that I was journeying through. No, we don't need to we don't need to invite trouble. that structure is. I wonder if the boss will ambush me here or not. Then, Veterni Mind Squall, I think is the name there, tends to be a fight that you end up doing. Uh, I just ran off from my party there a little bit to uh, try to avoid getting Cry of Frustration. Cry of Frustration is very strong when everybody is grouped up on top of each other, as you might expect. If everybody is a little bit more spread out, it uh, becomes a lot less powerful. But of course, heroes are sometimes dumb as bricks and do not... Like, you, I could flag them to manually spread them uh, so that they wouldn't get, be getting wrecked there, but that sounds like more micromanagement than I want to do. So I decided to just move myself off to the side and spam my uh, <laughs> my party heals. Okay. Their tongues randomly contain dust for some reason. I don't know why. Randomly not isn't like that's the random drop. That's like the thing that they consistently give me. Uh, I realize that can be a little unclear. I don't know why they consistently give me dust. I don't know who filled these frogs' tongues with dust. Ah, 
I don't know why we can't use this ourselves. Instead, we pick it up and then Blim turns into advancing it. Oh, great. Another book up. Now we're in the version that's for the dungeon. Also, for anybody who might be just, I don't know, looking for stuff, discord.gg slash gw, as I linked on the chat there, is the uh, unofficial Guild Wars 1 Discord server. So that's a good place to go if you're looking for people to play the game with uh, or if you have questions to ask. We need to talk to a worker golem, not a center golem. And it is this one. These were pretty good about removing hexes. the design of the game would change if things like that were percent chance uh, for like cast time or recharge were just instead of the percent chance to be halved if it was just that percent less so like um, if you had uh say the the 10 percent less or 10 percent chance to have half casting time what if it was just your spells cast 10 percent faster or have 10 percent reduced casting time or whatever it would be hopefully this is working just fine okay sometimes this worker golem on rare occasions can bug out and not actually get over there to the thing properly uh and that's really annoying as you can imagine not i've only seen it like once of the many, many times I've been through here. So it's not at all a common occurrence, but the time that I saw it, it was very annoying. Let's see what this great conch has in it. Oh, show me the money. I'll take that. As I said, amphibian tongue was, in fact, full of dust. Usually I feel like I get five, so that's a little bit less than normal. I don't know why this is called the Golem Disabling Lever. I guess we pull it so that way they're no longer disabled. Ula's threatening us or some such. I don't know. I'm not paying much attention to the dialogue. I prefer not to be blinding surged. Ah, uh, Spallet of Restoration, of course. There's a delay, I believe, added to the opening of the gates, so that way you would have to wait uh, and you couldn't just have somebody, like, jump in. Uh, I... My shield does not matter. I'm using Wind Prayers. It's going to be... Not great either way, but I should... Switch to my... Command shield here. That has the 20%... Reduced. What I should actually have is I should probably have an enchanting shield, but eh. I'm not 
too serious about this one. I should probably have one regardless. Yeah, I'll look into that. I might grab Chanting Carapace Shields. Okay, let's get to the next floor. There's a Carapace Shield. There's a couple of collectors. Which version do you have? You have the stance version. Oh, you have a non-max version. Cool. I'm just looking at Crimson Carapace Shields real quick. Huh. Interesting. Not what I'm looking for, though. Uh, Elton Thorn. This is not arranged in a very helpful way. Okay, you're another stance guy, but you have a non-max one. Virgil the White has a non-max one. It does. It is an enchanting one, so that's something. But that's kind of what I thought. That one is not what I want. Uh, yeah, you have the Max Hexed one. Garzman Noel, the one that offers you... Oh, no, he offers you another terrible one that I don't want. Okay, cool. Stalwart Carapace Shield. Ah, uh, okay, so those guys... I don't know, I'll have to look to figure out how I want to go about getting a enchanting shield. Has an enchanting shield plus 45 HP minus 2 physical damage while under the effects of an enchantment would be superior or um For situations where I'm using a build like this, where I don't have a specific offhand to use otherwise. Um, the usefulness of... Uh, of that shield would, would be greater, I think. Come on, worker golem. You can start moving. This is a spot where having access to Breath of the Great Dwarf is quite useful. Of course, I'd prefer it to be the stronger version that would uh, heal for 60 HP instead of 52, but eh, this is close enough. One of the important things about cleansing my party of burning is it means that the cast, like the healers, will not stand there cleansing people from burning, uh, and then stay there healing themselves from burning, which can be a, a thing that happens. Um, obviously, not something I want to have happen, but it's awkward to take heroes around this golem because it uh, will continuously try to. reposition itself to get around your party. That doesn't always work super well. like getting blinded there. Consider that somewhat suboptimal.
Well, I'll pick up my 68 gold, ki gold coins. Can I avoid aggroing those guys? I can. Huzzah. I'll take not aggroing random enemies for uh, over aggroing them. I'm going to go do our Legend of Zelda inspired puzzle. Alright, come on, golems. Let's go drop you off on your buttons. Oh yeah, the run to rank's kind of long, too. Hmm. Just trying to decide if I want to end after this or if I do want to try to finish things. The certain branch is taking a little bit longer to do than I was expecting is where that kind of comes down. For anybody who's wondering what my thinking was. Well, I had a couple more guys go get aggressive on us, so now I need to wait for this fight to end before my golem button way or downer I guess uh, is ready where's the flux matrix? it's around here somewhere, there it is Anybody's wondering, that was a bot that was uh, wanting to sell me something I have no interest in. So I'm ignoring it. I still like the trivia that this thing deals elite damage to this because the designer just put it elite in as placeholder. And instead of changing the amount of damage that the thing dealt to the golem to get the number of hits that they wanted, which was three, they changed the amount of HP the golem had, so that way they take three hits. <laughs> which is one of those like fun bits of trivia that I find particularly amusing. I'm getting Duncan flashbacks. Duncan is normally that way. This version of the map. That's also the... I think? I'm not quite sure. Maybe the layout's slightly different. These dungeon maps are used all over the place, so. basically done with this dungeon though Hi, no, I'm not Blim. Thank you for noticing. Okay, so at this point, what I've got left to do in the Asuran branch is I need to go to rank 
And I need to... Uh, like, the, the golem thing itself, that also takes a little bit longer than I think it does. That's not super long, but... Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here for the day. Um, the Asuran branch is just a little bit longer than I remembered it being. This was about when I was wanting to end, so... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here. I will be back next week, as far as I know. I I don't think I'm going to be streaming on Christmas Day. <laughs> but we're a little bit of ways away from that still. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here for the day. Um, I will plan to be back next week. I do want to do some more Dark Souls 1 randomizers. I may see if I can do both if I set it to a faster style of seed generation. Um... We'll see. I, d I don't have definite plans, but I do plan to stream next Saturday. I just don't have definite plans about 100% what I'm streaming. Probably either more Guild Wars 1 or maybe Dark Souls 1 randomizer. Maybe try to fit both in, uh, or maybe the mood for something else will strike me. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here for the day. Thank you all very much for watching. Thank you for subscriptions. I appreciate them very much. Uh, and until next time, everyone, take care and goodbye. <laughs>